Welcome to the Jeff Canada Show. But if you're going to get your feelings hurt, you might need to turn this shit off. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Jeff Canada Show. I am Jeff Canada. As always, can I say as always now? I don't know if I can say as always because it's only been one episode, but on as always my buddy mr zach jones with me what's going on dog oh nothing much man chilling how you been uh it was a good weekend man i uh it was so good that i don't even remember what i did this weekend i got a dog yesterday yeah tell me about that i got a dog uh we adopted a rescue australian shepherd he's two years old uh and he's awesome dude i went already this morning i went to the park with him and took him down and Took him off his leash and threw the ball with him. He's super smart. Uh, he's got good manners right now. Smart uh, dogs. Yeah, he like doesn't run off. He's not a bolter. Um, he stayed right there with the park, uh, with me at the park. His name is Diesel, and I don't like that. So I think we're gonna change it to Gibson. I think is what we're gonna change his name to. It's better. But we're gonna see what happens, man. But he's a cute dog. We went and picked him up yesterday, and uh, and looking forward to. Uh, Lots of good times with the with a road dog. Yeah, I seen the pictures of him. He's really cute. It's, yeah, it's funny because you were talking. You know, you said he's good. Like when you let him off the leash and stuff. And it's weird because I live on a bunch of land, and then like my, my little area, it's like fenced in. And mm-hmm. then in my fenced in area, in my house, my Doberman's just she goes crazy. Yeah, just nuts. I let her on my fence to run, and she just walks around, does her thing, hangs out, and plays with me, yeah. and minds me every second. Yeah, that's cool. But in the house, she doesn't listen for shit. Yeah, this one's got a few bad habits we're going to have to get rid of. Um, but it's just it's just cool. It's cool to have a dog that, you know, I've always had pits. Yeah. And then Candace has the weenie dog, and he can't do much anymore. He's just really old. And so we wanted to get a dog that we can take hiking and, and do some cool stuff. Go on with. adventures with. Yeah. 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 And so it's cool. He's a cool dog. Good good, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Did you uh did you play any shows this weekend? I did. I played uh Suburbs on Friday. What is Suburbs? It's uh, like a bar and eatery. Where's that at? It's over on Pie Market off of Fish Creek Thriller, oh, Montgomery area. Oh, okay. Magnolia. Cool. Like yeah. New Magnolia, Honey Egypt area. Yeah. And then we played Condor Lake House, which was fun. Yeah, I won't play there. Yeah. It was uh the beginning was very interesting. Um <clears throat> I've just heard too many horror stories of them fucking over the musicians. Um so yeah, yeah, they did, um, and we do have some shows lined up, and I'm still tossing back and forth the idea of pulling all the shows, yeah, um, because financially they did, and not by much, but they did, regardless. Yeah, yeah. And that, then, and they cancel last minute, and they do all kinds of crazy shit. Well, they didn't cancel on us this time. The first time they did, but was it was understandable because it was on the lake, the winds were super high, and it was already in the 50s. So that it's going to be super yeah, but cool. The, but listen, man, yeah. venues that have outdoor stages need to have cancellation policies. Yeah. And basically, you know, when we back in the day, whenever I was booking for Check Two Entertainment and we were booked like Sam's Boat, our what our deal was if you got told the night before, there wasn't like twenty four hours, but if you were the night before, meaning before, you know, yeah. eleven, yeah. ten, eleven, if you were the night before, they had to make the decision whether they were going to live music or not, and if they didn't, then they. You know, if the, then then you didn't get paid, but if they, but then if the day of, if they canceled, if you showed up to the venue, then you got paid half half your pay. Yeah, and see, that's what I think. If I'm gonna stay playing there, because we do have a bunch of shows lined out with them. Yeah, we lined out a bunch of like, well, I think we have like eight more shows with them, yeah. and uh, I think I'm gonna sit down and reiterate it and try to get up a contract or something like that Good because luck. they won't do it. Yeah, I know they'll probably just pull the shows, which is okay. Yeah, the problem is there's you know in especially in Houston, you know, there's there's just a million other musicians that'll snoop swoop right in there and just mm-hmm. take those gigs. Well the thing was when they canceled it, I had done they canceled it the day of. Yeah. And we're not talking like they texted me at eight o'clock in the morning and said, Hey, this is what it's looking like, blotty blotty. I done went down and rented lights because I don't have lighting myself. So I went down and rented lights from famous stages. And it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the afternoon, show starts in a you know a couple hours, gotta be there and stuff like that. And they're like, by the way, we're pulling the show. So I was like, What the hell? Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that that's the kind of shit that that we have to start standing up against. Now, I, I don't, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You do whatever you want to do. I've had a couple of musicians reach out to me recently, like, man, how are you getting away with telling these venues that you don't want to play there anymore? And I'm like, well, it's just I've gotten to that point in my career where where I'm only going to take certain things. You know, I'm just not going to put up with certain levels of disrespect anymore. But 
when you're on that level of trying to break in the scene and you're trying to really just get gigs, you got to take what you can get. Yeah, and that's that's where I'm at yeah. right now. Right. And I am I'm fighting it. It's hard. I'm not fighting them cuz it's it's not hard for me. I have no problem telling somebody no, hey, this is what's going to happen. I'm fighting my inner self going, you know you need this. Right. Is it worth it? Is it worth the trouble? But do you need it? Yeah. You know, here there's the question. Do you need it? And I think that that needs to be the question that musicians need to ask themselves more often is, do I need this gig? I think for me, comes down to certain venues. Yeah. Like, if I'm playing certain venues that are kind of like on my bucket list venues, and then some other venue I'm having issues with, then I could say, I don't need that. Right. But I'm not to the point where I'm playing certain venues or playing festivals and cook-offs all the time and, you know, yeah, yeah. the bigger stuff. Once I get to that point, I feel like I can say, I don't need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're always, you're, you're as valuable as your calendar says you are. Yeah. And I tell that to musicians all the time. You know, if you are getting paid the amount of money you want to make and playing the places that you want to play, then just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Right? But if you're not... Then you just, you have to take what you have to take. You know you can't bitch and moan and complain about making 150 bucks at a gig if that's what you're if that's the only gigs you can get. Yeah, and and see, I and with me, like <clears throat> I don't really I don't bitch about where I'm playing and what I'm making because I'm doing what I love and I'm supporting myself and paying my bills with it. Yeah, and so I'm very happy with it. And I don't like to 2023. I had to force myself to go play force myself and bust my ass to go play just to pay bills. Yeah. And I took a step back and redid some things in my life. And now I'm playing comfortably. Right. I'm happy about playing. And that's the best way to do it. And then that way you only take the gigs that, that, that matter. Yeah. And I was, I was literally killing myself to play. Yeah. And I don't have to do that no more. And I'm super happy about it. Yeah. That's cool. Well, you know, you're doing all right, dude. I mean, your name's all around. Uh, Everybody knows who you are around this around these parts now. Working on it. Working on it. Yeah, you're good. Speaking of uh, of that, uh, I don't know if anyone out there has heard that I'm holding a contest to see who's going to open up for uh, me at Dosi Do on September 1st. And the way that contest works is. All you have to do is you have to upload a video of you to any of the social media platforms, doesn't matter, and you tag me in it and you say, this is my submission to open up for Jeff Canada September 1st. Uh, original songs only, independent artists only. Um, I don't know why I have to say independent artists only because if you're signed to a label, you're probably not going to want to open up for me. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's who we're looking for. We're not looking for people that are in the cover scene. Not, I'm not saying if you're doing covers and you're doing original. I'm just, we're looking for songwriters. It's a songwriter room. It's a storyteller room. I don't want someone that's going to come in there and going to do one original and six covers. That's just not, that's not what we want. We want somebody that's going to come in and play their songs and tell their stories. And so we got three spots open, um, solo only uh no bands none of that stuff so if you want to be on the september 1st show in houston the woodlands texas um then just submit the video and uh, if you have any questions just shoot me a message on instagram or facebook or wherever you message people um what else what uh, what, what do you think about this p diddy shit going on what have you have you kept up with the, the diddiness no i haven't kept up with it i, I heard about either. it um it's it's wild i Someone told me that he got arrested, or I seen that he got arrested, not somebody. Most of my friends. Well, he's not arrested, right? He fled the country. I didn't know he fled the country. Yeah. Last I heard, he was down in Miami chilling. No, I think he fled the country. I, I don't mean, think he's got arrested. Makes sense. But they raided all his homes. Makes sense. I yeah, mean, it's pretty bad from the from what I'm hearing. But wasn't he touching little children or some shit like that? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think it was more of a uh, Epstein Island thing where he was getting videos of. You know, people doing certain things, and he was able to hold that over their heads. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, I'm talking completely out of my ass because I don't pay attention to the news at all. I'm only going off the shit that I've seen people <laughs> yeah. talk on TikTok. I seen. Speaking of the whole, you know, P Diddy and Epstein Island, I seen that someone had taken and they were watching SpongeBob, I guess, the cartoon, and uh, they paused it when at one point one of the episodes where SpongeBob shows his driver's license and it's got an address on it, and they typed in the address. And it was Epstein's Island. Now, I don't know how true this is. And they also say if you look at the Nickelodeon logo, the island, it looks like an island of splatter. It's the same look as uh, Epstein's. Man, I don't. I can't get behind all that shit. I can't either, but know? I mean. But have you watched the Nickelodeon? I've watched some of it. Yeah. I've watched, I've, I've watched some watched of it. it. I watched it. It's crazy. It's I haven't crazy. watched all of it, but I've, I'm 
I need someone to explain all this child shit, man. I I don't understand it. I don't get it. The problem with it, like I won't even watch porn if the girl looks too young. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, like it, that does nothing for me. Mm-mm. I don't I don't like that at all. It doesn't get your kicks. Yeah, I mean, I don't really watch porn anymore. But when I did, if the girl looked in Texas, anyways, well, <laughs> if the girl looked too young, I wouldn't. I would. That's just not like not yeah. my thing. So, yeah. you know. But I know in Montgomery County, we live in Montgomery County, and you live in Montgomery County. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we both live in Montgomery County, and there's a Montgomery County police reporter, and I kind of go through and look at the mug shots every day, just as entertainment. Oh, that's and, the best, uh, bro. Every See what they did? single fucking day, every day, every day. There's at least one person that's arrested for some kind of sexual stuff with a child. Yeah, what is going on? And has this always been a major thing, or and we're just now? It has sadly, and I feel like okay. Did you ever? What was that movie that came out not that long ago that everybody was raving about? The Sound of Freedom. Yeah, it kind of came to light more after that. I guess that was kind of like the opening door. To me, it seems like that movie was the opening door for everybody to come forward with all this bullshit, and you feel like you're seeing it more. You know, like when you buy a car, like yeah. you buy like a an old like 1995, you know, F one fifty. Then you start seeing more of those, but before that, you never saw them. Mm. I feel like it's the same kind of thing where now, when that since that movie came out, all of this is coming to light, and you're seeing it a lot more because people aren't afraid to come forward. Mm. Is is what it seems like to me. But my my only fear. So first of all, let me just let me be extremely honest about this. If you're a person that is currently or thinking about touching a child, please go get help. Please, like either a go get help or b go get a gun and just put it in your mouth and pull the fucking trigger. Like we don't need you. You're not a valuable part of society. I don't care what else you do. If you if you harm kids, you're a piece of shit. And you know, you can either go get help for that and and fix it or just off yourself because taking the innocence of a child is, I mean, it's, 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 I think it's the worst thing that can possibly be done on this planet. I think it's worse oh, I than agree. murder. I think yeah. it's worse than uh, anything else. I think it is the worst. That's and why they separate them in gin pop when they go to prison. Well, they shouldn't separate them in gin oh, 100%, pop. Oh, hundred percent. No, I think they should and, go in there and yeah, for let sure. them. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, I, my ex-girlfriend was a uh, probation officer and that's what she dealt with was sex offenders and loonies yeah and the stories that she told me man it just it made me sick she didn't really deal with a lot of the sex offenders because she wasn't the type to you know i don't think she could do it too much she would be like "Mm, just want to beat the shit out of them yeah but uh she did on occasion and the stories that she told me it was just it was sickening it was just sickening and i know people that have done it Mm. and but i know i know some people I guess the reason I was going to bring that up is because I was watching this thing yesterday on uh, Dr. Phil or something. Or I think that's what it was. And uh, no, it's definitely what it was. And there was this guy that for 16 years, his ex-wife has been telling the world that he molested his daughter. For 16 fucking years, he's been dealing with it. And he never did. And uh, his daughter believed it and everything. And then they go on Dr. Phil and he does a complete lie detector test. And apparently it wasn't like even close I think he said that he had to get a two to pass it and he got an eight, which means he like, it's like not, yeah, yeah, he didn't do it. Yeah. And, uh, the daughter refused to believe it. The, the mom, you know, but you know, and, and, and Dr. Phil was like, listen, I'm not saying your mom's a liar. She might've really thought this happened. Um, I'm just telling you it didn't happen. And you know, and the girl would not do anything about her dad. She went over to her stepdad and gave him a big hug and all that stuff. It was just, it's very strange. So, you know, with, with an uptick, of of things like that coming out there's also going to be an uptick of false accusations yeah and i think that that's a big problem too because imagine that like like if you're a person that is that is preying on children's innocence and you're getting away with it that's really bad like that's fucking bad but it's also really bad if you get accused of doing something that you never did and the problem with that the accusations of something you never did like a lot of the times people just do that shit just for the attention. Right. And that's sad. Like you're just, you're ruining someone's life or the money. Yeah. You you're know, Trevor Bauer. Yeah. The pitchers do, dealing with that. He's got, you know, another girl that come forward about him, you know, sexually assaulting her. And he's like, I have text messages the next day talking about how much she enjoyed the night. And like, yeah, I slept with her, but come on. And so it's just, I don't know, man. I just, the false accusations are, are, are as are bad. 
You know what I mean? And so I just don't want to get to the point like we do with everything else. We overcorrect and then you start having innocent people go getting hurt. Yeah, getting really hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's sickening, dude. It's the whole thing's sickening. You know what I mean? Man, the humans are fucking we're mean. <laughs> And you know what's funny is everybody's like, oh, we're 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 due for you know some worldly catastrophe, you know, disaster. I'm ready. A world reset. Yeah, I won't fucking do it. Yeah, right the now. strong will survive. Yeah, EMP blast. Do something to it. get rid of these fucking get rid of this bullshit. Let's start over. EMP blast. Like let's start the fuck over. Yeah, we need a five year, three to five year blackout, no power. Let all these fucking yeah stupid people just reset and just start over. Mm-hmm. The strong will survive and we'll be fine. Yep. Is yeah, I was uh, I was on the Chad Prather show on uh, Tuesday. I went on there and I was telling him, you know, if I was the leader of the free world, the very first thing I would do is eliminate school bumps and speed zones. And he's like laughing, and, and, and I'm like, yeah, let's just weed the dumb ones out when they're fucking young, dude. <laughs> just let's just get it over with. <laughs> I'm not. I, I don't know if that'll get me canceled or not, and it's a joke. It's a joke, folks, but it's fucking funny. I can't remember who I heard that from. That is not mine. I think uh, I don't remember who told me that at that some point, funny. but it's pretty funny. Um, I just stole a joke from somebody, but I don't care. What are you listening to these days? So that's I've been I've been on like an album kick, dude. I've been on an album kick. Uh, I've been jamming the newest Zach Top album. It's so good. I've been uh, the the newest. It's been out for a few months now, but the newest Randall King album is so good, yes. dude. The new Taylor Honeycutt. If y'all listen to any record out there that's dropped recently, go listen to the new Taylor Honeycutt record. She is so good, and that record is so good. So I'll have to listen to that one. Go check that one out. Yeah. The new Cody Jinx record's really good. Did it? Is it good? Uh, it is good, man. He's got a one song. I can't. I don't know the name of it, but it's like. Uh, Till it kills you or something. Much like you, I'm stuck on Zach Top right now, just yeah. jamming him. And then, uh, yeah, he's good. Also, my favorite album that has been released is John Moreland. John Moreland has a new album out, and you know that guy is just a song writing. He's just a poet, man. Yeah, he's just, it just flows out of him like water. Yeah, he's crazy. Craig Campbell's got a new album coming out, or it's out. It's called Class of '89, mm. and he's he's releasing them like one at a time. And uh, he's done Killing Time, you know, on the other hand, he's doing Be My Baby. So it's covers? Yes, it's oh, a okay. whole, it's a class of 89, so whatever songs that he, oh, that's cool. he wanted to do from that year, so like Anymore by Travis Tritt. It's one of my favorite songs do- of all time. Oh, I absolutely love singing it. Yeah, I've never sang it, but and, uh, it's a great song. It's funny, because I'll play the intro to it, and like when I'm at my shows, I'm like, alright, let's see if y'all know your country music, and yeah. like, I'll test them, and I've yet to have someone be like, oh, that's this. Oh, I can. T- I know as soon as I hear it. Yeah, uh, me too. Brian Sacco does a really good version of that song. Yeah, me too, and, and the intro is so, like, it's so, you know it instantly, and I people are just like, yeah, and one person shouted out, empty glass, I'm like, mm, that is n- not even real close. <laughs> empty glass, that's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. What else is going on before we get out of here? Um, in my world or just in the world in general? Just whatever. Man, you see all that bullshit with Boeing? The airplane? Something about their doors not No, on. not just the doors. Uh, apparently some dude came fo- forward, a whistleblower that worked for him, said their, their 787 line is like deemed they should like shut it down and not fly them. They're not safe. They're going to fall out of the sky bullshit. Yeah, I mean, you know, we are now currently in a... This is where we are in America. We're in a place where we have given... Uh, because of capitalism, which I'm for capitalism, not against it, but we have given just unchecked capitalism to these big corporations, mm-hmm. these these huge corporations, Apple, Boeing, Tesla, and, you know, just Amazon. Go down the list, and they have they're they're basically monopolies in their field. Yeah, and so they can kind of do what they want, and they're not worried about you know I, when are we going to realize that 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 greed. People that are greedy do not care about human life. No, they just don't. You know, they they're not gonna they're not gonna suffer from it. Yeah, and so they're just sitting on top of their castle, looking down, laughing. Yeah, and and so we have that, but we also have the fact that our government is just completely out of fucking control. Uh, they spend everything they make, and they just don't care what they spend it on, and that's taxing us to death. And you got the middle class that's going away because, you know, we can't keep up. Uh, the average American in this country, I mean, they just, we can't do anything anymore. Yeah. You know, you know, it's just, it's crazy, man. I know someone right now who has a credit score that's over 800, 
who makes, you know, about a hundred and ten, hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year and that person wants to buy a house and cannot buy a house right now. Yeah. And that's just insane to me. Yeah. But yet we're allowing these companies to go in and buy seventy percent of single household and like the you know, the single households. Yeah. They're going in and buying them and driving up the market. It's just crazy. And we're allowing it to happen. And so, you know, as much as the right wants to bitch and moan and complain about the homelessness and the illegal immigrants coming in and the and the trans people and abortion, as much as they want to complain about all of those things, uh, they need to be really looking at at what we're what we're allowing corporations to get away with in this country. That needs to be looked at for sure. You know, that is a big issue. The border is a really big issue that, that I agree with the Republicans on. But all this other stuff, you know, this is – I was talking to, to my girlfriend about this yesterday. I am not for abortion, not even a little bit, right? I'm not uh, – you know, but I am pro-choice. Mm-hmm. And it's not because of any feelings. It's because of practicality, Yeah. right? Like, I just look at abortion as one of those things that abortion has not a single fucking thing to do with how much – eggs cost at the grocery store yeah. and right now our biggest problem in this country is how much the eggs cost at the grocery store and milk yeah you know and Bread. right or whatever you know just stuff that we have to have is 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 just cr- crazy it's crazy how expensive it is. it's not all inflation too because these mm-hmm. corporations are having record profits so man I, th- I don't know how to fix it i think the one good thing that's not super high right now is gas prices yeah. Like they're not that bad. Well, they're pretty high. Three twenty nine a gallon down yeah. here in Texas is fucking bad. Yeah, but I mean, like it could be worse. No, that's bad to you. I guess I don't know. It's not bad and to what's, me. And what I also don't fill up all well, the time. But here is the fuckery about all that shit. Used to, if gas prices were up, that means the price of oil was up, and means yeah. these guys, these these old companies are making a lot of money. Yeah, they're not making any money right now. And it's, it's just up. Yeah, everything's just up. up and taxed, and oh man, they're just like let's let's just raise it up. We have fucked this country, and anybody that doesn't think this country is fucked is not. It, you're living in a delusional world. We are on our way to be in Venezuela, or mm-hmm. or worse. That's what we're on our way to. If if we don't get if we don't get our government in check, they're running around like a bunch of toddlers in a room with toys. Yep. If we do not get our government in check, really, really quick. I'm not saying which way. Don't fucking call me a liberal. Don't call me a fucking, do not put me in a box. I'm not saying which way, but if we don't, if the American people, for the people, by the people, of the people, if we do not get the government in check, we are fucked. That's got to be our number one priority as American citizens. Over, we got, that's got to be over who's chopping off their dick. It's got to be over who's smoking weed. It's got to be over who's homeless. It's got to be over uh, all of these things because the government is using all of those things to keep themselves in power. If you're a Republican right now, the border is not going to get closed because Biden, if Biden closes it, if it, if the border gets closed, y'all have nothing else to fucking run on. Like, so, so the Republicans, they don't want it fixed. You can't give the other team a win. And that's just not the way great countries should operate. Great countries should operate by putting the best people in their leadership positions, holding those people accountable. That's the way it's got to work. This bullshit we got going on right now, man, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what to do, but something has got to happen because we're going to be, it's going to be bad, bro. It's already getting bad, but it's going it to be really bad. For, I, think it, I feel like if it wasn't for fucking North Korea and them just being retarded all the time like they always have been and the whole shit that's going on with Russia, we'd be the laughing fucking stock in the government. Well, I think we are. I, I mean, to an extent, yeah, I believe yeah. we are too, but like... Not like the top of the laughing pole because we still got the other idiots that are doing bullshit. Well, yeah, you're always going to be, but but again, we have to not worry about that. You know, America was the light on the hill, man. Mm-hmm. We were the ones that, you know, we were the most innovative. We 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 took everything as challenges. You know, we didn't look at problems as something we can run on. Yeah, we looked as challenges as something we can overcome. And man. Until that gets fixed, I don't... And the only person that I hear really talking about it, it's not Trump and it's not Biden, it's RFK Jr. And I know he doesn't have a shot at winning because the way the party system is set up, but man... Does he run as an independent? Yeah, he's, he left the Democratic Party, but it's like, man, like he's the only one that's out there saying what I'm saying. Yeah. He's the only one. 
I don't know of any, I mean, yeah, Trump's out there saying we need to secure the border and we need to do this. And, and I agree with Trump on a lot of things. Right. And I don't agree with Biden on anything, but I also disagree with Trump on some things. And I just, you know, people like he fucked Trump, fucked small businesses, mom and pop businesses with the tax code that he came out with. He fucked us hardcore. And people aren't bitching about it because they're just, they're, they just, they get themselves in these echo chambers and they surround themselves with people that, that only, that believe what they believe and they're never called to task for anything. So yeah. they just, you know, you're just, the, the hamster in their head is just on this wheel of fucking conservatism. And it's like, they're, the conservatives are right, conservatives are right, conservatives are right. Nothing the Democrats can say will be right. Nothing. Everything's got to be, and that's just not the way it works. No one is right all the time. No one is wrong all the time. There are some great things about liberalism. There are some great things about conservatism. Why are we not using the great things out of each of those and eliminating the shit? Yeah. It's fucking unbearable, bro. It's unbearable. You remember how the, uh, we've always talked about middle of the road, how we're middle of the road. We don't, we don't lean one side right. or the other. And I'll repeat it again. I'm middle of the road. Yeah. You're middle of the road. We don't lean. I don't care who you are. Your left, right, center, up, down, north, you know, do fucking right. Yeah. You got my vote. Yeah. Do fucking right. Yeah. That's it's that it's not hard. It yeah. it really isn't. It can't be that fucking hard to get in there and fucking be like, all right, this is what needs to be done. This is how we could do it. We got a lot of great minds in here. Let's put them to fucking together and yeah. use them. But, but no. the but the problem is the fringes. The fringes of the country, the far left and far right, they have hijacked our government. And our government now stands up for those fringes. Mm-hmm. And us in the middle, those of us, and I, when I say the middle, I don't necessarily mean like I don't have my beliefs. I definitely lean left on some things and I lean right on some things. I definitely have my values. Those of us in the middle, we have got to figure out a way to stand up and say enough is enough. We need an adult in the room. We need the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Ted Cruz to shut the fuck up. We need the Cortezes and all those people to shut the fuck up. Like, we don't want any more fringe people. I don't want them in the government. I don't want them anywhere. Like, just go away. Go do your fringe shit and have a happy life. But stop forcing your fringe shit on everybody yeah. else. I don't care. And the abortion thing, the abortion thing is the one thing. The abortion thing is the one and only thing that I can understand both sides of the argument. Yeah. And I'm sorry if that upsets you, but I can. I can understand both sides of the argument. I don't have a dog in the fight because I'm a male. And I would never get one or I would never condone one. I would never say, hey, we need to get this, right? Yeah. I would just never do that. So I don't, it's just one of that. That's the one I kind of stay away from the most. I don't really, I'm not, whoever, who's for or against what, I'm not going to vote. It's a hard one because like you don't want it. But at the same token, there are stipulations behind it in situations where you can understand it. Yeah. And that's what's hard about it. Mine's easy. My stand, This is my stance on abortion. And you can say that I'm for killing babies if you want to. I'm not. That's your fucking idiocracy in your head. Is if the baby reaches the point where it can survive outside the mom's womb, whatever week that is, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, I don't know. I'm not an expert, so I couldn't tell you. Whatever... It is that the baby can can live outside of the mom's womb. That after that point, then abortion should be illegal under no matter what. A rape, incest, no matter what. You've yeah. had enough time. Before that, suck that little fucker out for whatever reason you want to. Uh, use it as birth control. Do whatever you want to do. As long as the as long as tax dollars aren't paying for it, I don't care. That's you know again. I don't want those babies to die. I would re much rather those babies be born and, and given a, a life. But you got to be practical about it. People are going to do it no matter what laws you pass. They're yeah. going to fucking do it. They're going to find back alleys. They're going to use coat hangers. They're going to do whatever they got to do to make it happen if they really want to. There will always be a doctor out there that believes otherwise and will help anybody right. that needs the help. It's always so. going to happen. So why not? Let's, can we? Just, and, and the thing is, we can literally just put it behind us. And we can move to the next fucking thing. But that we don't put anything behind us anymore because we don't solve anything. We don't fix any fucking problems. You know what? If all the other bullshit was fixed, then I would say, hey, let's have a fucking real debate about this and let's figure it out. But it's just that particular thing is not affecting what's affecting 90% of America. 
and we need to focus on what's affecting 90% of America. I hate that this podcast has become political. I fucking hate it because I don't like it and I don't like politics, but I just, this is not the country that I was raised in. It's not the country of my values. Um, it's, it's embarrassing sometimes like what we do in this country. And I just wish that somebody would just stand up and be like, okay, dad's home. <laughs> like daddy's home. Kids go to your fucking rooms and we're going to get this house cleaned up. Mm -hmm. That's what we need. Yeah. And I don't know how that's going to happen or what that looks like. There needs like. to be someone to come in with a big swinging dick and just start slapping the motherfucker around yeah. and telling everybody what to do Yeah, and make it work. Yeah. And I don't see anybody out there doing that yet. Well, I mean, like Trump has good instincts. He what's what Trump stands for. He says he stands for. I agree with. But at some point, you just got to shut the fuck up and do it. Yeah. Stop saying it and do it. Yeah. Like you could like Mr. Trump, the personal freedom, you could have fixed a whole lot of these problems in your four years and you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And you didn't do it because your Republican people on under your on, in Congress they didn't want you to get some stuff fixed because then they don't have anything to fucking run on yeah so anyway we've been going for long enough for this introduction 30 minutes damn we've been going for 30 minutes doesn't feel this like it gets away from you so fucking fast anyway y'all thanks for tuning in to the Jeff Canada show uh, on this week's episode I have CJ Kern he is a guy out of the Houston area uh, pretty cool dude he's a police officer um, super nice guy so y'all check out this episode y'all check out this interview this discussion whatever you want to call it and thanks for tuning in to another show we'll see you guys next week we'll see y'all later Dude. welcome to another episode of the Jeff Canvas show I have someone that I've never met before this is the first time I've ever met him like literally just met you right in yeah. the parking lot or yeah. in the driveway <laughs> parking lot because we're in a big studio we're in yeah. a big massive studio so the parking lot my driveway, my, my driveway home. Uh, CJ Kern, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? Is that what you go by, CJ Kern? Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. So you were the one of the ones when I did a, I, I sent out a Facebook post saying, hey, email me mm -hmm. if you're interested yeah. in coming on the podcast, and you yeah. shot me an email. Mm -hmm. And then I read your your bio, and you, you are a cop currently. I am. I am. So you're currently a, a police officer. I am. Cool. Yeah. I had, a, uh, I had a, a cop on here last week or two weeks ago. It hasn't been released yet, but he was 40 years HPD. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. His name's Brian Hoffner. He owns a, a knife company. He's one of my sponsors now. And, oh, uh, I've seen them. I've seen them on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a really, really cool dude. He wrote this this ta this song, and then I got to go to Nashville and record it. It's coming out on March 1st, I think. March yeah. 1st or 2nd. 40 years HPD. Hell, yeah. So where, where are you at right now? Uh... Can you say that? I'd rather not. Okay, cool. Oh, no, no, not a big deal. But is it like okay? Is it a? Is it just do it I this work way? At, I work at a sheriff's office. So is it like yeah. small town, small town kind of yeah. situation? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How's that? It's a. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Are you a <laughs> patrol? That's what you yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. I work how? night. I work night shift patrol. Ooh, how long have you been doing so, that? I've been at this department for about seven months. Yeah. Or so. Um, then prior to that, I was at another department for a few months. Well, I actually took a break. Um, I took a break for a while after I sold my house in Magnolia. And then prior to that, I was at another department for five years. Um, so it's been a, this is my third place to work, but it's been interesting yeah. to say the least. Um, uh, have you always worked in like small town sheriff departments or have you worked in like big city stuff? Well, no, I haven't. I haven't worked in any, well, I used to work in this area. Um, but that was only for a few months. I left because of the schedule and I get my kid every other weekend and I was working every weekend cause my days off were Monday and Tuesday. Right. And I was like, no, so screw then you're this. having to like, figure yeah. out what yeah i'm like get not it. getting time with my kid and like this ain't working yeah so. same same thing with me i mean i try mm -hmm. to spend as much time with him as i can luckily he's 13 now so he's kind of in that i'm too cool to hang out with dad phase. yeah yeah and so uh unless we're doing something cool he doesn't want to just come over here and hang out you know <laughs> it used to be he used to he used to it used to be really cool for him to see me do what i do mm -hmm. now he's just like eh, he's on his phone or 
Mine's mm. mine's thirteen in April. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Brody's a little football player. He's a little cool kid at school. Got got him a little girlfriend. That's <laughs> you know she's probably I don't know. I mean she's very young, so I don't look at her like that. But you know she's definitely probably yeah. one of the, the hottest chicks in school. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Uh, but he's you know he's I got him a weight set and everything for Christmas, and so he's mm-hmm. working out. He's, you know he plays he plays quarterback, and he just he thinks he's the yeah. shit. So. Mine you know. is mine is kind of carrying on with music. He plays. Oh, cool. The, he plays the clarinet. Yeah, Brody plays the trumpet. Yeah, yeah, and he does really good. But I don't think he's gonna play next year because he's really into athletics, man. He's like, yeah. he plays. But he's always played baseball. He plays select ball. He's always played baseball. He's always been really good at baseball. But this year was his first year playing football and he played mm-hmm. quarterback. And then, uh, but he goes to a massive school. He goes to the second largest junior high in the United States. Oh wow! And so they had six teams. Six freaking seventh grade teams. Wow. And so he was on like the fifth. But like I said, this was his first year playing football. He played one year of Pee Wee, uh, <clears throat> but he played like defensive end or something, you know. And so it's really his first year, like really <coughs> going in. Um, so you haven't worked like any of the big Dallas, Houston, no. none of that stuff. So you no. don't have to deal with all that shit. Mm-hmm. It's more just small town. It's laid back. It's, it's meth nice. busts and it, yeah, <laughs> fucking domestic violence calls. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know. I, I I'm from a town like that, and so um, I definitely get that. But it's you know you you probably don't have to be as scared for your life. I, I think that uh, I think we actually fight more cows and horses than we do yeah. people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, can you tase a horse? Um, I wonder if that'll work. I've never tried. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not do that no. horses are awesome uh yeah it's you know small town living in general is just so weird I, and then the cops you know everybody knows ever all the cops mm-hmm. i mean you've only been there seven months but i'm sure that yeah. they already know you yeah and so yeah they you ever just parked it like on the side of the road and somebody just comes up stops and just starts shooting shit with you oh yeah yeah, yeah. People, i see that all the time people in small town. flash their lights at me roll their window down and we'll stop in the middle of the county road and talk for a minute about whatever yeah um so but we we moved out there about the same time that i started working there we moved out there we're about we live about 45 minutes from college station and um it's just it's awesome man my the uh the people we got hooked up with um actually through social media we were looking for a place to live and uh we found this guy had commented on my deal about looking for a place to live. And, um, uh, it, it's this little place on like two acres, but they have like, it's, it's, it's old money in the County. And so they've yeah. got tons of land out there and, uh, it's just, it's super quiet and peaceful. And we were, wa- we were walking around this morning with our coffee and we we're like, man, this is just, this is awesome out here. Yeah. And especially to find a place to rent like that and that that meets that criteria is just we were so blessed for that opportunity. Yeah, it's it awesome. awesome. Yeah, I'm looking uh we're I really want to get out of here, man. Like I I live I'm, I grew up in Splendora and then I moved to Houston and I lived in, in like downtown Houston area for for years. And then I moved out here in 2010, but when I moved out here, man, it was not anything like it is now. Mhm. I mean, I, I I used to live off not, where 99 is now, and yeah. it was just country. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We could go ride four-wheelers. We could do whatever yeah. we want. And now <laughs> now it takes me – you know, my son lives about about two and a half miles from here, and my girlfriend lives about three miles from here. Mm-hmm. But if, like, on a – like, today, if I'm going to go pick him up from school, and then let's say I'm going to go from his house to her house, that's like five and a half miles. It literally takes me, like, 45 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, and you wonder why crime rate is what it is, and yeah. and you know people are killing each other, and just too many people mm-hmm. on the roads, and you know too many people. And what's crazy is, used to when you would go, you would get in traffic. It was always like at nine o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Dude, now at noon or one o'clock or ten o'clock, yeah, you drive through these on these streets, and it's mm-hmm. just traffic. You know, it's crazy. Got to pull that hoodie off. Yeah, it's hot in here, dude. Yeah, it's hot. I could turn that fan up. I feel I do feel the AC blowing. This uh this house is an old house and so it it uh like I have the AC set on like 67. But oh, for wow. some reason in this room it's like 10 <laughs> degrees hotter than that. So um I can get you a blanket if I need to. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, so you're a cop, but you're also you're a musician as well. I saw I you, you only, but you only have one song out on Spotify, right? I have one song out. Um, man, the I hate I hate telling the story about that. Well, it's a good. The the song itself has a good story, um, but I. More often than not, I feel like I went to Nashville and kind of got screwed, mm. um, which I guess is not from, f- well, from everybody I've talked to, they're kind of not surprised. Yeah. So um, it was a really weird deal. So that that song Freight, Freight Train that's out there uh, in, it the, sounds good. in the internet, uh, I wrote the guitar playing for it. I wrote the lyrics. I wrote the, it's my song. It's my composition um and i went to nashville and found this demo service they're like hey pay 750 bucks and you know we'll cut your track or whatever so i went up there for when they did tracking on it um and my mind was blown like oh my gosh my mind was blown whenever i heard what they did with it in a good way or bad uh, way in a good way yeah because it sounds great the music sounds great on it um and i came back home and he sent me the he sent me the master for the for the tracking and he's like practice your vocals you know or whatever and let me know whenever you can come back up here to lay down the vocals well work and life and money and everything just it didn't work out and i wasn't able to go back up there and um the option to have a demo singer had come up um or the idea whenever we were talking and um, I was like, man, I can't make it back to Nashville to do this. Just, just have a studio singer do it. Really? So ended up having a studio singer do the vocals for that song. And um, then I was playing with the idea of, of releasing it. Of course, this was a couple of years ago and I was still kind of, just starting getting rolling on music again after having a pretty long break. Yeah. Um, and so I had saw that he had offered like promotion packages for radio and all this different stuff. So we're talking like, Hey, how how much does this cost? How much this cost? And finally I rolled the dice and I was like, screw it. Let's put it out. And, um, so I paid him like 1800 bucks for like this radio promotion package and Mm. got it released on all the streaming and everything. And, um, then a year or two goes by. Um, and I was talking to this, um, I was talking to this place in Houston. I was talking to this producer in Houston about some stuff and I was telling him the story and he's like, well, that's kind of weird. Why do you have, why would you, why would you release a song out into the world? That's not you singing it. And it's weird because when you look up the song, it has my name and it's my song, but it's somebody else singing it. And it's like, he was like, well, that's kind of misrepresentation. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't think about that. So the, so the one that's out currently is not you singing it. No, it's not. Did you put, are you the one that owns it or do they own it? I don't know. I don't know how any of that works. I mean, you paid for it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you need to get we need to get to the bottom of that shit because yeah. if you paid, <laughs> here's the do it. There's there's multiple things that are a problem with that, right? Yeah. One, you know, to release something with somebody else singing it is like that's just weird. That's that's weird. And I didn't. I feel like I didn't know any better. Yeah, it no, I sounded get it. like a good idea, and I was like, yeah, screw it. See, whatever. that's the problem with this industry, man. And and I I complain about it a lot, or I, or I talk about it a lot. You know, the issue is when you get these people like radio promoters and studios and, and various people. And I mean, I'm not saying all of them, but a lot mm-hmm. of them, they prey off people that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then what's bad is you can't as artists, we can't come out and say what's really going on mm-hmm. because then nobody, then nobody wants to work with us. Yeah. And that's what's happening with me right now. You know, I'm not getting booked as much as I should be because I'm, I'm being very outspoken about the industry because Mm -hmm. there's just certain things that need to change. Yeah. You know, uh, like, like for instance, radio, I I don't want to talk about that a lot, but, um, 
this whole paying five thousand dollars do a, a small market radio push that's what it costs and it's just ludicrous because there's mm-hmm. no return on that investment yeah and but and and so those of us that have been doing it a while we have found other ways to do that but those but they take advantage of the people that don't know mm-hmm. and so you know he they got you in there for the 750 demo deal mm-hmm. and made you these deals these promises mm-hmm. but that what they he probably didn't tell you that you can record the vocals anywhere you probably didn't tell you that like you could have literally came to any studio down here in Texas and recorded the vi- the vocals and sent those back to him and he could have put them in there and they, it would have been just like yeah. you sang it there. I had no idea. Yeah, I mean, you can do that. And then they charge you $1,800 to do a promo, but then you look at the song and it doesn't even have a thousand spins on Spotify. So how, mm-hmm. what was that $1,800 worth? Mm-hmm. So really what I would do is I would get, do you still have the contact information and mm-hmm. all the name and everything? Yeah. And it, are they the ones that put it up on Spotify and all that shit? Yeah, I mean, he was he, his title, I guess, was producer, and yeah. he he handled all of that. And he had told me it had gotten some plays in Canada, um, but on can- Canadian radio stations. But I I really haven't seen a return for the song besides got, it. Yeah, you got snowed. being out there. You got snowed. Yeah, yeah. So, what I would do if I were you, this is just my opinion. You can take it or leave it. I would contact that person, tell them to pull that shit down. Yeah, that's what I want to do. And then I would say, I want to pull it down and and redo it. And then and then tell him that you want the stems. It's been long enough. He made it. He made you know twenty three hundred dollars off you, twenty four hundred dollars off you. Uh, it's been long enough to release it and send it to you, and then get the stems. And what the stems are, that's the tracks individually. Mm-hmm. So that way we can take it to a studio down here and you can go into that studio, you take them to stems, they'll go through and you can go through and sing your own part mm-hmm. and do it, do it down here. You don't have to go to Nashville. Yeah. That's what, yeah. that's another thing. You know, everybody thinks they got to go to Nashville to record. You don't have to. It is a little bit cheaper to record per song in Nashville now than it mm-hmm. is to do down here in Texas. Um, if you're going to go to one of the Texas studios, it's going to cost you about 2000 to record a song around here. Yeah. Uh, but but it's yours and but mm-hmm. but that's that's one of the big issues with this industry is like but it's also a lot of the musicians fault because we don't we don't go down the rabbit holes and try to learn everything we can learn before we get into it we mm-hmm. just we're so excited that we have this Trial piece of and us error. yeah mm-hmm. you know we wrote this song we have this piece of us and we're so excited to get it out i did yeah. the same thing man i released some songs early in my career that i shouldn't have and uh, did them the wrong way and other people had their hands in it and all kinds of shit, man. Mm-hmm. And so it, it happens, but we got to learn from it. And it just sucks because what that does, whenever you have an experience like that, it makes you not want to fucking record anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And it may, yeah. and so it's like these assholes, they got, and I don't know the guy. I mean, he may not, he may be a good guy. He may, you, you just mm-hmm. may not know what to ask him. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But these guys, they feed off, you know, younger, more, more, um, inexperienced artists that's what yeah. they that's what they do and they it's make like their a, money uh it's just like a money it's a money wagon it's yeah. just this whole get industry. songs out get song get money in and get songs out as fast and as quick as possible it's just a machine yeah you know in hopes that one of them mm-hmm. takes off but mm-hmm. but in all in all likelihood i mean you're more you're more likely to uh win the lottery i mean that, yeah you know than you are <laughs> one of your songs taken off these mm-hmm. days Yep. it's uh it's messed up man that's why i got into this that's why i got into the podcasting that's why i started pushing my brand in a whole lot different directions not just music because mm-hmm. it's i just don't know how someone records a song puts it out and then has a career off that i just it's just not like it used to be mm-hmm. yep so that sucks yeah. that sucks yeah. man but i would definitely i would get i try to get that if if you plan on releasing more music mm-hmm. if you don't then who gives a shit leave it out there you know what i mean yeah i plan on i'm working on a a six song i'm organizing a six song uh ep right now yeah that's gonna be like acoustic sessions oh cool uh and i'm gonna go record with uh stormy cooper yeah, yeah. in houston to do that um yeah those guys are great man and he's uh, he's one to, to take yeah. the stems to and just recut them those guys are great man mm-hmm. they do great work yeah. i've never worked with them but i know tons of people that have yeah i'm gonna go down there in march to get that done and uh that song is gonna be probably gonna be one of the songs that's on there i'm gonna read redo it my original version you know um so it'll be it'll be good if you have my email address if you want to um shoot me that guy's information and I'll I'll contact them. I'll get it all done. 
Yeah, I'll I get just, it all down here for you. I would. I wouldn't know what questions to ask or what to say or anything. Yeah, I'll just say, hey, I'm representing you, and we want to work on this song, and we want to do it, cut, recut his vocals on it. We're gonna do it in the studio down here. Mm-hmm. We can take yeah. it over to my buddy Josh and go in there and do the studio, pay an hourly rate, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. and then have somebody mix and master it again, and just put the vocals on top of the the instruments. That's the, the, the only the only thing you might have a problem with is <laughs> since it was in 2022 they may not have all that so you may just have to tell them to take it down you may have to redo the whole thing yeah yeah which is fine yeah it's whatever it's just it sucks learn from my mistakes you know dude i've made so so many (laughs) thousand dollar mistakes it's insane Mm -hmm. like all the time between buying equipment that i was told i needed and then i never used it and Hiring people to do social media for me and hiring people to help me do some artist development stuff and hiring people to promote songs and mm-hmm. and then come back and just wasted money. That's why yeah. I'm doing it myself now. I do everything myself. I, I edit this podcast myself. I record everything myself. I mean, I, I go to the studio, but I pretty much I'm the producer in there. I mm. uh, just have an engineer that does all the stuff I want him to do. Yeah. That's yeah. how I do it here. But I don't depend on anybody anymore because I've been burned so many times, man. Mm-hmm. But the good thing is they're starting to be, I don't, this, this was, wasn't around in 2022. You know, you didn't have so many podcasts about music. You didn't have so many artists that are willing to help each other out. Mm-hmm. Like that seems like that's a new thing that's really starting to happen is you got a ton of artists like myself or other people that are really opening their arms up or opening their, their hearts up to mm-hmm. other musicians and trying right. to, you know, and trying to help them out. Yeah. Cause that's really, man, I just want to see nobody else get fucked. That's mm-hmm. what I want. Yeah. I want. I want to see nobody else get <laughs> screwed over. How do we keep people from getting screwed over? Mm-hmm. Well, the only way to do that is by having conversations about getting screwed over. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't want to do that because they don't want to call somebody out or they don't want to, you know, they don't mm-hmm. want to throw anybody under the bus. And I get that, but like, it's almost like trying to have a, a more of a team mentality together yeah. of all of us kind of coming together and like, Hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to chase this dream together yeah. and, you know, it the makes light's sense. at the end of the tunnel, Yeah, you know? And it makes sense because when one of us falls, somebody's there to help you up. Yeah. But exactly. on the flip side, when one of us jumps a level, it can help all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And then that person may be stuck there and the next person may jump that level and then it helps yep. all of us. So the more people you have in there mm-hmm. and the more people, and, and not, not only that, just the hang and the rights and the all the things that involve the music community that can yeah. be fun. Mm-hmm. And for some reason mm-hmm. they're not fun because nobody wants to team up and yeah. nobody, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just awkward. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Like my message, my biggest message I'm having out right now is let's, let's help each other out, man. Yeah. You know, I think everybody should make money for what they do. Mm-hmm. Right. I really do. I mm-hmm. honestly think that, but right now it's so imbalanced where you got the people that have very little to do with the actual art of creating the song are making all the money while the people that are doing all the work and making the art are getting the, the least amount of money. Yeah. And that needs to be flip flopped. Mm-hmm. And how do we get that? How do we flip flop that? You know, mm-hmm. now if you're a radio promoter and you're out there and you're really promoting your people and you're growing them as artists and you're doing the things you're supposed to do, then you deserve to make your money. Absolutely. And if it's five grand, it's five grand. That's fine. Yeah. But if you're just one of these guys that's sending 20 emails a week or 20 emails, you know, every week, once a week mm-hmm. for 20 weeks or whatever, or all you're doing is just making the connection and you're, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, I know promoters literal promoters that will make more money off a show than the actual artist does. I'm not kidding. That's nuts. Yeah. That's so nuts. Yeah. And I'll talk to them and I'm like, what are you like? What are you doing? And they, and they, they think there's nothing wrong with it. It's their hustle. I mean, they, mm-hmm. and that's fine, but I just, I think it's terrible because you know, you're taking advantage of the artist. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen so much stuff out there recently about, you know, um, solo acoustic musicians increasing their rates, you know, because it's like, it's like, look, y'all are not realized, like when it comes to booking a show, which booking is terrible, by the way, yep. I'm, I eat, sleep, breathe, freaking sending messages and emails constantly. Yep. Um, but you know, y'all are not realizing like when you're paying us to come up there and sing for three hours or two hours or whatever the time is like you're paying for 
these instruments that I've done maintenance on, that I've purchased, that I spent countless hours practicing at home, and this equipment that I've purchased, gas to put in my car, you know, feeding a family at home. You, there's all of this stuff that goes into just going and playing a solo acoustic set somewhere. And, um, people are wanting to sell you on, Oh, well, and you, and you know, this, they sell you on the whole exposure thing. Like, Oh yeah. Hey, well you can come and play. And, and, you know, I've had somebody's, I've had a venue say, Oh, well, yeah, you can come and play. And, you know, if, if I make enough money that night, then I might throw you something. Yeah. No, dude, like this is, this is my hustle. This is like my side thing that I'm doing. I'm trying to make something out of this. Yeah. Like I'm not my, one of my favorite quotes that I, I don't know if I live by it, but it sticks in my mind was, um, in that movie, the dark Knight, the, the Heath Ledger Joker, he says, he says, well, if you're good at something, never do it for free. Yeah. And I started, I started really living by that. Um, and you know, there's some, there's some causes for like, like if there's fundraisers or stuff right. like that, then I get it, you yeah. know, heck yeah, go and play for a good cause and raise money or, or whatever, you know, but yeah, you got to treat it like a business. Yeah, you have to, exactly. but on the flip side, I can tell you this, I've had a lot of really, really cool opportunities mm -hmm. come to me because I did something I didn't want to do or because I did something for free or because, it, and so yeah. I'm still pretty, I'm still pretty open-minded to do anything. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, it just depends on the gig or whatever it is, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the original world. You know, mm -hmm. now if you want me to come play three hours of cover songs in your bar or in your restaurant or wherever it is, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that for less than a hundred dollars an hour. It's not mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. So it's either 300, but actually yeah. now I'm charging 200 everywhere. So I have a lot of places that I'm still playing that I'm still only making, you know, 300 bucks. But a lot of those places have turned into 600 bucks mm -hmm. and or, or 400 because some of them have went from a three hour to a two hour. So they'll do two. So two, 200 an hour. So it's 400 bucks, which is fine with me. Yeah. I'll go in there for two hours. I'll yeah. see for two hours. I'm making 400 bucks to go home. Yeah. Uh, not only that, I usually make more tips when I do a two hour show versus a three hour show because I guess I'm just more into it. I got you. And I don't really take a break, I don't think. Or maybe I'll take one little 10 minute break. Yeah. But a three hour show, you know, every time I. I, like I won't even do four hour shows at all anymore. I just, I won't do them. I just, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. I've done thousands of them. I just, I won't do them. It's, it's two, it's three hours or less, but like a three hour show, you know, that's still a cover show. It's not an original show, mm -hmm. but what's crazy is a lot of these like hour opening spots. I'm making more money than I do for a three hour for a three hour cover show, mm -hmm. which is nuts. Yeah. You yeah. know, so you got it. You know, you just have to figure out what's important to you. Mm hmm. And then you have to hold everyone else to those values mm -hmm. that's around you. Yeah. You know, so I don't really view it the same way you do when it comes to you're paying for the instrument, you're paying for all this stuff because mm -hmm. you're not, you're actually just paying for the product. Mm -hmm. You're paying for what I'm doing on the three hours that I'm on your stage. That's it. You're not paying me for setup. You're not paying me for tear down. You're not paying me. You're paying me for those three hours. That's what mm -hmm. I'm getting. That's the product. Yeah. You know, if you pay a, a carpet cleaning company come in and clean your carpets. You're only paying for them to clean your carpet. You're not paying for their trucks. You're not paying for that shit. Yeah. You are because they should have that wrapped up in their price. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with us. We have to have all that shit wrapped up in our price. Yeah. But there's no way I could wrap up everything I do in the price for me to do a show. Mm -hmm. Cause I literally work eight, 10, 12, 15 hours a day when I'm not even on stage, just on this product mm -hmm. just on my brand yeah i'm not kidding like mm -hmm. it's i don't have this is it and that's what i do mm -hmm. and so if i was actually going to charge the amount of money I'd be, i mean i'd have to i'd have to make ten thousand a show <laughs> yeah you know yeah. and maybe that'll happen eventually who who knows but yeah it happens sometimes you know i've, mm -hmm. I've made it a couple times but it's tough man it's just a, it's a, just a hard business mm -hmm. you know luckily you have a a career that you do you know that, yeah. that pays your bills and so this is mm -hmm. just for so what I would do, since that's the case, is I would just say yes to everything and just go do it and see what happens. But mm -hmm. only once. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'll like I'll like if a venue reaches out to me, I'll come play your venue for the first time for two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. That's the, but I'm but I'm letting them know up front this is a entry deal. I'm gonna do it for two hundred bucks the first time, and then after that it's two hundred an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want me back, cool. If you don't want me back, that's cool too. Mm -hmm. But I'm not I'm not going in and playing a place 
Yeah. Uh, but a lot of places they'll pay me, you know, I guess cause my name's big enough now they'll just pay me the 500 bucks or 600 bucks or 800 bucks. Or right. Whatever it is, right. And not really say anything about it. Yeah. I try to be, I think I've, I think so far I've been pretty smart about kind of looking at my opportunities and being like, okay, you know, weighing the pros and the cons and like, you know, what, what kind of, what could I possibly get out of this? Or, you know, what, what doors could this possibly open if I do this, if I take this opportunity that's presented to me, you know? So rather than just, just being an ass and being like, no, 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 no. I, I try to consider everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so my motto is what I live by is every, every handshake matters. Mm-hmm. Every single handshake matters. And so the more times you're put in a position to shake someone's hand, the more chance you are of developing a fan, the more chance right, you are of exactly. finding an investor, the more oh, chance yeah. you are of booking a show. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say that's, that's why it's more important to me to be out playing in front of someone than it is to be sitting here on my couch. Right. So if I don't have anything and somebody says, Hey, you want to come to the song spot for a hundred bucks? I'm going to go do it mm-hmm. because I want to make money. So if it's last minute, I'll, I'll do almost anything, right. because, not necessarily make money, but I want to, I want to be in front of people. I want right. to be doing something. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's, it's just a tough business, man. It it's is. just a hard business. And I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning for sure. Especially trying to juggle with working nights and, you know, the schedule is nice because it's like a rotating schedule, like rotating shifts. And so you have the same days off all the time. Gotcha. Um, and so, you know, I have I have a calendar on my refrigerator that has all of my days off or highlighted for the entire year. Yeah. So I know what my ba- my availability is for, for scheduling gigs or, or whatever I have going on. Yeah, and the odds so, of something popping off in a small town that's going to call all hands on deck. You know, it happens. I know it happens, it but happens. it's probably not. Yeah, it's probably not as mm-hmm. much as like being a Boston no. cop or some shit. No, you know no. what I mean. No, can you imagine not. that being a cop in, in like <laughs> in like L A? Can you imagine being L A? That'd be insane. That would be insane. I think it, I think it would be a cool accomplishment to be able to say that you worked for like NYPD or yeah. L A P D or something like that. Because I mean, even H P D. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I've got some, I've got quite a few buddies from HPD, uh, acquaintances, co colleagues, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, HPD is a huge department. Yeah. It's, and it's a, and, and our city or our, I don't really claim that city, but the city of Houston, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, I don't know what the crime rate is. It's probably not in the top 10 in the United States, but it's, it's still, I mean, it's you turn okay. on the six o'clock morning AM news and it's. Yeah. They, there's three, four, five, six, ten, twelve 12 mm-hmm. murders a night before, you know, especially in like South Houston or like, uh, uh, acres homes or whatever it is mm-hmm. called over there, you know, yeah. um, and right here where all these like Hispanic nightclubs and shit are, mm-hmm. there's always something popping off of those yep. places every single day. It's tough, man. Uh, I, I could not be a cop. I know that for a fact. I, I would shoot someone in the a like in my first hour on the job there's no doubt in my mind about it dude Mm -hmm. i mean i get frustrated by the the dumbest shit Mm -hmm. and so if i had to be a cop and have to deal with the dumbasses y'all have to deal with man i just it uh like i hate it when a cop gives me attitude i fucking hate it and i want to get out of the car and punch him in the face but I also don't know what call that guy there's was on. Bad, there's bad apples out there. But I also don't know what call that guy was on beforehand. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he's had to deal with. Mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I but I have a big, huge heart for, for them. You know, my best, not my best friend, but a really, really close friend of mine, Kayla Sullivan, she was killed in line of duty in uh, 2019. She was a Nassau Bay Sheriff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, Sergeant, sorry, she was a sergeant in the Nassau Bay Police Department, not a sheriff. Whatever, whatever. I don't know the difference. But anyway, (laughs) uh, and she detained, she was detaining a guy, a traffic stop who had a a violent, you know, a warrant for uh, assault Mm -hmm. with a deadly weapon or something. Yeah. Right. And uh, he fought her off. She got one cuff on him and he fought her off and pushed her down. He got in his truck and ran over and killed her with his truck. So he was unarmed, completely unarmed, but he still killed her. And she was a great woman, great cop, just a like 
I mean, everything about her was exactly what you want in a police department. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he took the life from her, you know? And, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's very hard for me to find, like when somebody says an unarmed black person was, or an unarmed person, I probably shouldn't say black, but an unarmed person was killed by the police. Like, first of all, you don't have to be armed to be deadly. Mm-mm. Like, no, absolutely not. You can pick something up. You can do something else. I mean, and then a lot of these freaking dipshits out there, like, well, you you know, if you're in a high speed space, high speed chase, just let them go. What? Let them go. Or if you pull somebody over and they give, like, let them go. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. Like the dude that was killed in the Waterburger parking lot not too long ago. Mm-hmm. He, he was they he fell asleep in his car and they pulled him over and he tried to run the cops and they end up. Mm-hmm. He, I think he took one of them, their taser or something and shot him but it's like okay what if you would have let him go and he's desperate now and he's running he gets mm-hmm. and he's drunk and he kills somebody down the road yeah exactly exactly you know that happened here in my my apartment complex a few mm-hmm. years ago there was a guy from midland and uh he was in the oil field and uh he was building a house down here so he was living in my apartments yeah and the cops there was some uh u.s marshals that were following this guy and he pulled he exited and they lit him up and so the next thing you know, it turns into a chase. Well, he pulls into my apartment complex. He jumps the fence. He actually points the gun at the cops and no one fires on him. No one fires on him. Hmm. And so he, he, uh, starts going door to door and he finally finds an open door on the third floor building right behind me. And there's a 55 or whatever year old dude just sitting there not doing anything. He took him hostage and had him hostage for six or eight hours and Holy then, then fucking killed him and killed himself. And it's like, why didn't y'all take him out? Why why didn't mm-hmm. somebody not shoot him right then and there? Mm-hmm. Like this whole being soft on crime shit is not working. No, it's not gonna work. It's not working anywhere. Mm-mm. It's not working in L.A. It's not working in San Francisco. It's not working in Houston. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, the the, the break ins for cars and shit in Houston are just crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just nuts. The it's <laughs> it's a it's a hell of a society right now. Yeah. And then it's we're and then and we're getting more desperate because everything's more mm-hmm. expensive, and so criminals are going to start getting more desperate. Yep. Yeah, you know, regular people might even turn to a life of crime because they don't have enough money to pay their bills. Yeah, it's fucking yep. crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy time to be alive, dude. It is, and uh, it um, uh, you know, nobody, nobody wants to be the police anymore. I know. People don't want to be the police. Anymore. I couldn't do it. I'm telling you, I could you know? not do it. The first time, if I'm driving down the road and there's a left lane driver that's just poking in the left lane, I, mm-hmm. I'd shoot him through the back of the head. Like I would from the cop car. Boom. Lights out. <laughs> I know that's bad. Yeah. God, that's so bad. <laughs> so I just, it's, it's, I guess this is a good thing. Like the most frustrating thing in my life now, our left lane driver. <laughs> like that's I it mean, that's, that is the most frustrating thing in my life so that's a that's i got a pretty be, good life you can be thankful for that i am i got a pretty good life <laughs> but i'd say what man when you're like and you're on 99 or you're on 45 or you're on i-10 or whatever and it's two lanes you know and uh and you know you get just got your cruise control set on 75 mm-hmm. just cruising and then you go to you know you're in your right lane and then you go to pass up an 18 wheeler and there's a car driving the same speed as an 18 wheeler. Mm-hmm. You're know, like, pass. Yeah. It's for passing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's why I think they need to have two different speed limits. I really do. I think there needs to be a speed limit in the fast lane and a speed limit for the other lanes. Yeah. And it should be 10 miles an hour faster in the far left lane than it is in the mm-hmm. rest of the lanes. I make a joke with everybody, man. The speed limit on every single road in Texas is 85. <laughs> I mean, if you're talking generalities, I mean, basically everybody yeah. on all the highways in Texas or FM roads, you know, people are driving 70 to 90 unless there's traffic. Yeah. That's how fast people are going. But like yeah. if I'm driving, if I'm pulling the trailer, so if I'm pulling the trailer, I don't go more than 60, 65, maybe because yeah. it just sucks so much gas. To yeah. Any fashion that. But like if I'm driving and okay, and I'm saying I'm driving 65 mm-hmm. and, a, and I'm coming up on an 18 wheeler, I know I got to pass them. I always look in my mirror to see if anybody's coming. If somebody's coming at a faster speed than me, I wait for them to go by me before I pass them. Right. Yeah. I don't just pull over no matter what. Mm-hmm. That's yep. such a dickhead thing to do. Yeah. So if I was a cop, there, there's one cop in like uh, Colorado or something that has a TikTok, and pretty much all he does on a daily basis is pull over left lane drivers. 
<laughs> I mean, there's so many videos of yeah. him doing this. Yeah. And he basically, what he'll do, he'll just drive the speed limit, and he'll watch, and if there's a car that's over in the left-hand lane and people are passing on the right lane yeah. to get around him, he'll wait and follow him for five miles or so, and then he'll light him up. Yeah. And he'll pull him over and be like, you can't. And, and what's funny is most of the license plate that he pulls over from Texas. And he's always like, I know you're from Texas, and I know that y'all, mm-hmm. that's not against the law down there. Because I guess here it's not against the law. So there's... Unless it's posted. If it's posted. there's there You'll see signs in some place, some yeah. highways in Texas. You'll see signs that say, like, left lane for passing only or... But the or cops whatever. aren't pulling people over but for it. I, uh, I, I never have. Um, you're one of the fucking bad ones. You're a bad have. cop, dude. You're a bad apple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, Pull those fuckers over. Now, I got... Uh, I didn't, but one of uh, my ex got pulled over for it in like 2007 or eight. We were like on, we were on like I 10 or 290, like out west somewhere. And a state trooper pulled, pulled her over for uh, being in the left lane without passing. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like, what? That's a thing? Yeah. So most yeah. people don't know it's a thing, but it, it should be a thing. Mm-hmm. Like it should be a thing. I, I think consideration for other people's time and consideration for other, for others needs to be a bigger thing that's in society. Yeah. Because right now, no one, I mean, I don't want to say no one, but very few people have consideration for anybody else's time Mm-mm. or anyone else's anything. I mean, you go to, you go to a ATM mm-hmm. and you got cars just lined up and you got some dipshits that are doing 19 transactions. Yeah. Or you go to a grocery store and there's, someone leaving their grocery cart right in the middle of the damn driveway or just go down the list, man. If you really, I talk about this all the time, but if you really want to see humanity at the, at its lowest point, Mm -hmm. go to a pickup or drop off for kids in elementary school. I mean, it is, Oh yeah. I don't know how there's not more road rage incidents and more deaths in Mm -hmm. that situation. The roadways are, um, every time you get in your car to go somewhere, you're, rolling the dice yeah you know we get you know so many roadway road rage calls of you know hey this person was driving past me and pointed a gun at me or or i mean it's just absolutely insane and i think i think that uh all common sense and courtesy goes out the window when people are on the road trying to get somewhere yeah I but really and, it, and it's and it's you know you're you're driving and you're distracted Mm-hmm. because a phone or you're eating mm-hmm. or you got your screaming ass kids in the car or whatever. And so you have so much to worry about just within your own vehicle. Yeah. And you're not even taking into consideration what's going on in someone else's vehicle. Mm-hmm. I think about yeah. it all the time when I'm on the road at night, like if I'm coming back from a gig and I'm on one of these back country roads, cause a lot of times I'll drive four hours, play a gig and then drive four hours home yeah. the same night. Yeah. And I'll be driving and I'm like on these, just these, you know, these two lane roads with cars mm-hmm. passing and you're literally a foot, two foot, three feet away from the other car. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, what if that person's having a bad day mm-hmm. or what if that person's not paying mm-hmm. attention to the road? Yeah. I, might, I mean, I could, I could be snuffed out just like that. Yeah. So if you think yep. about it from that point of view, there could be a lot more accidents on, on the road mm-hmm. than there mm-hmm. are. Yeah. So maybe it's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of wrecks, man. Yeah. I mean, they say that it's, that it's, it's one of the most, like most dangerous things you do is drive. Mm-hmm. statistically yeah you never you never know yeah you never know you well never you never know, know anything Mm-mm. that's what's that's what's kind of cool about being human and once you uh once you embrace that mm-hmm. once you embrace that you don't know what's going to happen yeah and that's what i did i just kind of embraced that tomorrow i could wake up and not be here mm-hmm. uh it's it's freeing yeah you know because it's like you start living more for today and not so much worrying about all the shit that's coming down the pipe Mm-hmm. Um, you mean you obviously still got to prepare for that shit, but yeah. it's like, you know, I say I make it all the time. You know, we could be sitting here having this conversation, and an airplane could fall out of the sky <laughs> and land yeah. right in, yep. you know, right in our yep. house, or yep. whatever. You know, I've, I've known I've known uh, cops tell me stories about people getting impaled while driving because something come off a big mm-hmm. truck. Or I had a man, I, I had a a call that I went to for an accident. A uh, crazy story. How would this lady have ever known that she would be driving down an FM road and a fucking tree just randomly just fall on top of her car? Yeah. And the branch went through 
like if this is the driver's seat right here, the branch of the tree went through the windshield of the car and stabbed the uh, center console next to her. It was freaking insane. But she I'm made like, it? Yeah, she, she was, was fine. Right. She was perfectly fine. But a, two inches over, three inches yeah, over. Two or three inches impaled. over, and that branch that was like this big, like she would have been done. Yeah. You know? Mm-mm. It wasn't storming, nothing. It was a sunny day out and just a dead tree. Pine tree? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fell over on the road on top People of People do car. not realize how deadly pine trees are, man. Mm-hmm. They really are. They're so deadly because they splinter really easy. They They break in half. You know, they get so tall and they're pretty pliable, but once they become not and they, they'll snap in half yeah. and they'll just fall over. Yeah. Uh, and they're everywhere, especially out here, dude. They're mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah, they are. You piney, know, piney woods of Texas. Piney woods of Texas. <laughs> I call my, every, whenever I'm on a radio interview and they ask me what my sound is, I always say it's piney woods rock and roll. <laughs> that's how I like to, that's how I like to equate my music. Yeah, that's a good, that's you know? a good descriptor. Some of it. I don't know. I'm starting to maybe think I'm more country than I thought I was because I'm starting to get all these country artists now that are like bigger, that are like following me and yeah. talking to me and telling me that I'm yeah. country and shit. Like, it's a, it's crazy. I think, yeah, I think you're on the right track. Yeah. I don't care. Mm-mm. Like I don't have, a, I don't, I, do, I, I don't, I say it all the time. Like I did not ask anyone <laughs> to put me in a box. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to play music. And mm-hmm. I just want to put songs out that make me feel something. And if they're rock and roll, they're rock and roll. If they're country, mm-hmm. they're country. Same, man. Yeah. Same. I, you know, for, for a long time, uh, I've always struggled with myself trying to put my music in one of the genres. And I'm just like, and you can ask, you can ask uh, my girlfriend, like I'll ask all the time, like, man, does, does my song, does this, do these songs really fit into like this genre? Cause I feel like I can't figure out where my songs fit at. Yeah. And, um, I think that's a good problem. It's like, well, you know, your songs are unique, you know, they're unique to you and, and that, <clears throat> um, that melody or that guitar part that you, you know, I think, um, during one interview, Cody Johnson was talking about, um, I forget who he was talking about, but I think he was talking to David Lee and he said, you know, I think he put it the best when he said that the good song, the song is out there like in the air. And if you'll just sit there and be quiet and still, and just let that song come to you, it's just, it's unique to you. And what you've been through in your life and your experiences and you know, what your drive is and what bothers you and what other doesn't bother you. And, and, yeah. you know, and so I finally, I think I finally got more confident about my songs and been like, man, I don't have to fit into anything. I can just, I can just yeah. write, I can just write down. Yeah. And I can just write what, whatever comes to me yeah. you and know? be you. Yeah. That's, exactly. that, we need more of that mm-hmm. because if you look at the guys that blow up, right, let's mm-hmm. just take, Zach Bryan, Tyler Childers, Luke Combs, Morgan Wallen, uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just go down the list of all the people that blow up. And even yeah. just go, just say here in Texas, Cody Jinks, Co Wetzel, Parker McCollum, mm-hmm. uh, Cody Johnson. You know, the thing is, all of those guys have their own unique sound. Mm-hmm. It's very unique and distinct to what they do. Yeah. So they, but they've made it like they've got there. But then what you do, as soon as you have somebody pop off like that, then you have a million copycats come out. Mm -hmm. How many people are trying to sound just like Zach Bryan right now on TikTok? How many people are trying to sound just like Tyler Children's on TikTok? Yeah. So it's like, but, but what, what those people don't understand is, is they, they're, those artists are an influence to you for sure, Mm -hmm. but you should not sound like them. Right. Have your own sound because because it's that's already been done. It's not going to happen mm-hmm. again. For yeah. you're not going to get another yep. Cody Johnson. Yep. You're not going to get another Oliver Anthony. Like they blew mm-hmm. up because of their because of how unique they were. Right. Exactly. And so that's that's I take that into consideration whenever I'm writing. Is it's like I'm not trying to sound like anybody else. I'm mm-hmm. not like you know I I'm literally no artists that are like this. Yeah. When I was writing, I wanted to write a song that had kind of a Cody Johnson type vibe. I mean. To me, that's that's weird. Yeah. Like I don't ever think about that mm-hmm. when I write. I just think about 
I want to write this song. And when these lyrics, when I'm writing these lyrics, these are, this is how these lyrics make me feel. Mm -hmm. And then, then I'll go to write the music and I want the music to make me feel similarly to what the, the, the lyrics do. You know, I'm right. not going to, right. I'm not going to write a up like a happy lyric song to a slow droney mm -hmm. shit. And yeah, I'm not going to write yeah. a song about suicide mm -hmm. to a four on the floor beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, however it makes me feel, that's what I do personally. And I mm -hmm. think if more people would do that, we would have a lot better music out there than what mm -hmm. we currently have. Yeah. And I also think that all that a lot of these labels and a lot of these people, uh, promoters and stuff, they wouldn't have the job they have now. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, hey, you know, I don't want to do it. I don't want to sound like that guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one. Yeah. That's one of my. That's one of my only really issues about the big canned studios like Stormy Cooper or Rosewood or a bunch of the Nashville guys. Um, and Stormy Cooper's not near as bad about this as some of these other places mm -hmm. are. Rosewood's not either. But like, you know, they they have their session guys, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what they'll do is they'll schedule their session guy. And I could be talking out of my ass on this. This is what I think. So mm -hmm. if Stormy Cooper, anybody watches this and you want to contact me, uh, <laughs> please do so. Cause I would like to, I, I want to know, like, I, mm -hmm. this is a, you know, if you, if you have like a session guy, a session mm -hmm. guitar player and you schedule him for the day because you got like eight tracks you need to knock out. Mm -hmm. And then he, they go in there. Well, the, all those eight tracks are going to have that same feel to it. Mm hmm. So then whenever you release a song, that's, then you're going to have similar sounds. Because everybody that plays an instrument, they have a sound and a technique that is Co unique to them. Correct. You know? Yeah. And so so that's why I see a lot of these songs that are coming out of, of some of these studios, and they have a different singer on them, but the music sounds almost identical, or mm -hmm. sounds the same. Yeah. Yep. And it's like there's no unique flavor to mm -hmm. it. That's why I like yeah. my process, and I do everything here not here, but in the studio here in town, you know, I go in and I just say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I don't know who my session guy is going to be. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Yeah. I mean, I know who I'm going to yeah. use on drums every time, but <clears throat> I don't know who I'm going to have on bass. I don't know who I'm going to have on guitar. I don't know if I'm going to have fiddle. I don't know if I'm going to have steel. I don't know what I'm going to have on it. Yeah. yeah. It just, let's lay down the scratch track and yeah. whatever happens, happens. That's how mm -hmm. I do it. Uh, and I like how distinct sounding my songs are. Oh, yeah. I like the fact yeah. that I don't sound like anybody else. Yeah. I think that, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head a minute ago, you know, more, more artists need to have more confidence in what they're doing. Yeah. You know, be unique to you, you know, uh, you don't, like you said, you don't have to sound like everybody else, Yeah, you know? Um, and you know, more often than not, you know, the general public is going to admire you for sticking to your guns and being yourself and saying what's on your mind and keeping that unique sound that is you you know what i mean yes so nothing um, sells like authenticity mm -hmm. nothing oh, people yeah. want authentic they they're people are tired of the fake mm -hmm. they're tired of it i mean they're just so tired of it dude and you know that's why i mean one of the things that i've noticed is the quality of fans that i gain on acoustic shows is much better than the quality of fan that i gain on full band shows and I honestly think that's because the authenticity that comes across on an acoustic show when it's just you and your guitar, mm -hmm. no bells and whistles, just yeah. y'all, just that's it, you and your guitar, <coughs> maybe another guitar with you or something. Yeah. But there's just, it's just raw. Mm -hmm. You know, I and those people, man, for some reason, they just become better fans than someone that sees you at a festival or sees you yeah. at a full band gig. That's why I tell everybody all the time that are using all these pedals and shit, you know, all these harmonies, all these harmony pedals mm -hmm. and looper pedals and all that shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, listen, it's cool for a song. It's cool for a song or two, but, mm -hmm. but really just learn the song, uh, dive into the song, connect with the song, mm -hmm. play the song, and then the audience will connect with you. Yeah. You don't need yeah. the harmonies. You don't need the, the, all the effects on the guitar. Mm -hmm. You don't need all that shit. Mm -mm. Just you, the guitar and the audience. Mm -hmm. And if you can get that part down, then later on when you start adding all those bells and whistles and you're doing it the right way. But when, if you're just throwing harmonies and you know, you're why, why is that harmony there? Well, it's, it's on the record. Okay. So you're playing an Eagle song. 
Yeah. What's cooler for me to sit there and just do an Eagle song, just me by myself or to have all these five part bullshit harmonies on here mm-hmm. that are fake. Yeah. You know, and yeah. a lot of people will question it. You know, if you're, if they're watching, you know, if they're watching a band and, and there's a piano track, but there's no piano player on stage. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happens. It's it's all the time, you know. And I'm not knocking it. Do whatever you got to do. Yeah. Because all the big bands run tracks, dude. Mm-hmm. All of them. Uh, it's just weird for some people because some people are like, "There's no pedal still up there. Why is there a pedal still going on?" Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But teach his own. I mean, Chad mm-hmm. Cook does that, and they put on a great show. So. Yeah. You know, one size definitely doesn't fit all. Yeah. I just I really feel that acoustic shows when it's just you and your guitar in the audience, that's where the magic happens. Mm-hmm. I think it's a. Like you said, like you said, the man, when you can connect, um, recently I played at a, well, in the beginning of January, I played out there at a lakeside oasis. Yeah. I played out there and, uh, um, it, uh, it was on a weekend, but you know, it just, it, they didn't get very busy that Saturday night. And, um, but you know what? I can uh i can honestly say that i felt like i felt like that was one of my better little sets that i have played yeah and it was just me and a couple people back in the kitchen and the lady at the bar and maybe one or two people sitting at tables in there and i felt like i was like man i i think this is one of my one of the best times i've ever had playing songs was just to these couple of people you know, and, uh, I don't know what it was, but I, you know, it was the, just connecting to the only way I can describe it is just me being up there. And, you know, the reason that I do this is, well, not the reason that I do it, but when I get up there behind the mic, I, I'm, I'm shredding all my problems, getting stuff all my, off my heart. Like I'm, I make it a point to get up there and give 100% of myself behind that mic. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, just the connection of connecting to the energy in the air in that room, just in the acoustics, because there wasn't, there wasn't very many people in there. And that place is a really acoustic place because of the tile floors and the high ceilings yeah, and stuff. Room. And I was like, just it it was amazing. I was like, man, this is awesome. Yeah. And I walked away from there just with a smile on my face, like, man, that was that was fun. That's cool. You yeah, know? it's a cool little spot. Yeah. I played there a couple of times. They got me booked there, I think again next month. Um, or maybe the next two months I'm booked over there. It's it's a cool little spot. You know, I have much better luck in the small town little places like that than I do when I go to a big town. Like like if I play inside the loop of Houston. Mm-hmm. I want to blow my fucking brains out almost yeah. every time, dude. It's yeah. like, what am I doing here? Cause nobody gives a fuck. But if I go out and play some little restaurant in whatever point blank, mm-hmm. Texas or yeah, whatever, then mm-hmm. I go in there and I kill it. And every time I make more money in tips, I make more money and more people buy merch. Mm-hmm. They're way more respectful. They're not coming up and you know, dude, I've just had so many people come up and get pissed off. Cause I don't know the song they want or yeah. like, that's something that uh that's something that I don't do. I don't take requests. I have yeah. an ad, I have an existing list of songs that is in my practice regimen that I go over frequent frequently. Yeah. And I just when I'm playing, I pull from that list of existing songs that I know already. Yeah. You know, um I know some people I know a lot of musicians they take requests and whatever, but But you'll get there. Yeah, it, you know, the the thing is I'm building I'm yeah, building my bank still for sure. of songs. Like me, I so. know like 3000 covers, dude. I've been doing this for a long time and that's mm-hmm. and that's like no no where I don't have to pull up a like I I mean and maybe it's not 3000. I can play 3000. Maybe it's only I don't know that I maybe it's 500 that I can play. Mm-hmm. that's still a lot of fucking songs yeah, yeah one time is. we did a test this now this was probably in 2010 or so mm-hmm. but i did a test one day i was like okay, i'm gonna play as many shows as i can i'm gonna play the songs in alphabetical order and i'm gonna see how many shows i can play without repeating a song and i did like six sh- six and a half shows oh wow or something like that it was mm-hmm. some, it was definitely over five mm-hmm. shows of those are all four hour shows all oh, of them dang and I didn't repeat a single song for that many. So that's a lot of songs. It's, a, it's so much, <laughs> dude. It's so much. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but that, but I mean, I, I rare, if I'm going to do a three hour show, I rarely make less than 150 in tips mm -hmm. rarely. And that's because of that, because I can always pull back on these, you know, and I, and I, I do genres. I, I'll, I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll play an Oasis song. I'll play a Atlantis Morissette song. I'll play a Pearl Jam song. And then I'll go play a, you know, Waylon Jennings song or mm -hmm. a Willie Nelson song or yeah. I'm like, and then I'll play a <laughs> fucking, uh, radioactive and then i'll mm -hmm. go from radioactive to fight for your right and i'll go from fight to your right to you know <laughs> just whatever i'll do whatever yeah but it's all yeah. but everything i do is to get eyes on me mm -hmm. everything for when i play one of my songs so people are paying attention right so everything that i do leading up what i what i try to do is i try to do two to three covers and then i'll do an original mm -hmm. and uh, what i try to do is i try to lead that I tried to lead those three covers to my original. So people are paying more attention mm -hmm. to what's going on. Yeah. You know, and then I also don't play two slow songs in a row. I don't play two fast songs in a row. I have, mm -hmm. it'll be like, you know, I'll split that up. Yeah. Uh, now a full band's totally different full band. I'll play, you know, we'll do three upbeat songs and a sad song and then we'll do mm -hmm. three or four upbeat songs and a sad song. Yeah. But whenever I'm doing acoustic shows, it's just, I just try to keep it fresh and keep it on top. Now the bad part about me writing so much and doing all this shit is I don't have any time anymore to sit down and learn a cover. Mm -hmm. So the last cover I learned was probably stoned by whiskey Myers. I just learned that stone, one recently. Stone by whiskey Myers. Yeah. And then before that, it was probably Cast No Stones by Cody Jinks. That's on my list. And before that, it was probably Beautiful Crazy by by uh, Luke, Combs. Luke Combs. Yeah. And so that's that's like the last songs I've learned. You know, mm -hmm. so I do. I mean, I do some newer stuff, but like White House Road and stuff like that. But it, that's all stuff that's five years or older. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've learned a song in the last. <laughs> I don't think I've learned a song that's come out in the last five years. Yeah, yeah, you know because a of, why? A lot of mine are, a lot of mine are probably, besides my '90s covers, my '90s early 2000s uh, country songs that I do. Most of most of my most of the rest of my list is you know the last five years or newer. What's your much. favorite song to cover? Oh man, um, not your favorite song, your favorite song. She's about to say. <laughs> I can see it. I can see her being like, because <laughs> my girlfriend does that shit too. Because somebody be like, uh, I don't know if y'all are y'all married. No. Okay. No. Cool. Because no, we're not. The other day I had Luke Prater in here. I called his girl, his girlfriend. He's like, wife, wife, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, oh my bad. Because if you're if you're not married, you automatically just say girlfriend. We might as well be like yeah. six years and have a baby on the way. So yeah, that's how. Whatever. <laughs> but like Candace will be at a show and somebody will say somebody be like, hey play your favorite song and then she'll yell out like with or without you. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, that's not my favorite song to play. That's yeah. your favorite song I play, but that's not my favorite song to play. Yeah. So, man, my favorite song to play. Um, <sighs> Mine varies. Right now, it's probably I'm Not the Devil by Cody Jinx. I really love playing that song. God, I love that song. It's so good. I'd have to look at my list. Because. <laughs> okay, well, what's your least favorite song to play? Or do you not have any? Oh, I don't have a least favorite song. Really? No. Fuck, no. I do. Um, <laughs> man, I do. When somebody comes up and asks me to play Tennessee whiskey, I just, I want to, <laughs> I want to jump head first off the stage and see if it kills me. I play it. I usually play it, but that and and a lot of the newer ones like, can you play something in the orange? Can you play, uh, North the Richmond North of Richmond? Can you like all the fucking like just over I, what i this is the thing i don't understand if you're just a normal everyday person not a musician just a normal everyday person and you go to a bar and you got a musician that's playing songs for you why i need somebody to explain to me what part of what why is the reason let me let me rephrase this What is the reason why you want to hear someone that you're sitting there watching play a song that you've heard a million times? Why? 
Why, why is because is that the only thing you could think of? So that's mm-hmm. what you ask, yeah. or is that your favorite song? So that's why you ask. Mm-hmm. Like to me, why don't you ask for a song that's popular but not as overplayed? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if somebody comes up and asks me to play "In Color" by Jamie Johnson, I mean I don't know it, but like that's a cool request to me. Is mm-hmm. it a over? Is it a very popular song? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, if you come up and ask me to play. Even some of the older stuff, you know, if you want to come up and ask to play Friends in Low Places, I'll do it. That's cool. That's mm-hmm. fine. Sweet Home Alabama. That's cool. Yeah. But I just don't understand what, why we get to the point where it's like, I need to hear something in the orange 18 fucking thousand times a day. Yeah. And I need yeah. to make this musician that's, that I'm watching, I need to make him play it too. Mm-hmm. And then if they come up and ask you and you don't know it, like sometimes you get people that are literally pissed off. Yeah. What? Yeah. You don't know that song? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry. Can you play guitar? Here, here's the guitar. Can you? Do you want to play it? <laughs> yeah. I'll let you play it. Yeah. See if you can do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I used to, I, I used to be a lot more of a smart ass than than what I am now. You know, used to when somebody come up and ask me for sh- and act like that, I would just straight up call them out and just fuck <laughs> with them. But now, now my response when somebody comes and ask me something I don't know, I just say, "Listen, man, I've been on the road. I'm kind of torn all over Texas now." I'm writing my own music. I'm releasing my own music. And I just have not had time to sit down and learn a song. I love mm-hmm. that song. It's a great song, even though I probably don't like the song, but that's what I say. Mm-hmm. And then they'll be cool about it. But I don't know, man. I just don't understand why people got to fuck with the band. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you got to fuck with the band? That's a good That's a good way to put it. Like, like why? Why do you got to mm-hmm. stump the band? Mm-hmm. You know, why do yeah. you got to... You know, why do you got to yell out? Like, I, you got people yell shit out that you know you can't play. Mm-hmm. What I like doing is fucking them, though. Like, somebody yelled, I'm just me and my guitar, and they're like, play some Metallica. And then I'll pull one out, and they're like, what the fuck? Like, you just did that? <laughs> but really, like, they're they're doing it to fuck with you. They're not doing it because they really want to hear it. They're doing mm-hmm. it to fuck with you because they know you're just a guy with a guitar, and you probably can't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. yelling out Freebird. Mm-hmm. free bird fuck you <laughs> die <laughs> like you're not funny you're not a ri- like this mm-hmm. like that i mean that mm-hmm. literally happens every night sometimes two or three times a night somebody yeah. yells out free bird so you're yeah. not original <laughs> so why are yeah. you doing it yeah mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's crazy yeah. people are fucking weird man <laughs> or maybe i'm the weird one it, that could be it hey but we just talked about uniqueness earlier yeah you embrace that shit yeah you know um, life's weird man people are weird yeah. and they're assholes and they're inconsiderate mm-hmm. and see that's why that's why I couldn't be a cop <laughs> no way have you uh, have you had to discharge your weapon in, in the line of duty yes you have you've had mm-hmm. more than once just once just once yeah yeah how that, we won't go into details of that but how that <clears throat> did, did uh did it cause any damage um it was well it wasn't a person um, but, Ooh. um, the situation, the situation in particular, um, I, I kind of had to improvise, uh, <clears throat> it was a cat, was, wasn't it? It was no, a pissed off cat. No. Well, was it a cat attack no. you and you just fucking no, shot it in the head? No, but I have, I've done my share of, uh, kicking cats. cows and, and deer and things like that. Um, but no, I was, a. Uh, so a shift partner of mine had crashed her vehicle in floodwaters. Mm. Uh, the vehicle was upside down in floodwaters, and um, I I located the vehicle. I didn't realize it was a cop car until I got up next to it, um, and she was inside of it. And I had to, uh, man, I that freaking glass on that freaking car just would not break no uh, matter what i hit it with it would not break and i could not i could not get her out of the car it's um, filling up water and- yeah and i mean i'm we have those big flashlights i'm smacking these this glass with that flashlight and just trying to get this glass to break and uh so what i ended up doing was I in a safe direction. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> I kind of, kind of, kind of put my pistol up next to the window and shot a couple shots off to break to break the window because yeah. I was trying to get in the car to get to her. Um, but just that, just that in itself. I mean that that's something that that I 
I will never, never, ever forget that. Yeah, that I can night, imagine. You know, I mean, because there's still a human and being inside there, mm -hmm. even though you're not yeah. right now. You're not like in that situation. You're not fearful for your life. Mm -mm. You know, you're just yeah. trying to help somebody yeah, out, and exactly. you're trying to do whatever you got to do. So, but there's still mm -hmm. a human being in there, and that mm -hmm. bullet could hit something in the car and yeah. i mean so you're thinking about that in the back you got to be thinking about it in the back yeah. of your head yeah you know if i'm going to discharge this farm this projectile is going to go through this window and you yeah. don't know where the glass is going to go you know where the bullet's yeah. going to go you don't know what's going to happen yeah. but you got to get in and there i still and i still remember it was the rear driver's side window um that i that i was able to get broken um because i was like of course, I know my partner's in there, and, you know, the water's waist high, and I'm just like, man, I, I have to get in this car. I have no choice but to get into this car to get to my partner. Yeah. And no matter what I did, I could not break that glass. And, but you would have uh, done the same thing for a civilian. I mean, oh, it's yeah, just, for you sure. You just have to do what for you sure. got to do. You have a job. Absolutely. needs to be done. <clears throat> we got to do it. Yeah. You know, and... and you know, that's the thing that people don't realize to the normal public that aren't police officers. Mm -hmm. They don't realize, yes, you train. Do y'all have enough training? I personally don't think so. No, we don't. But you train for, for certain situations, right? You train, you train, you train, mm -hmm. you train, just like in the military. Yep. But, but the problem is you have to adapt and overcome when, when, mm -hmm. when something happens and your training is not there. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, you're trying to break into that glass and you've probably been trained to break it either with your glass breaker you have those little things you can break glass yeah. with or yeah. with your or with your uh your flashlight or a baton mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when that doesn't happen, then what do you do? Yeah. What do you fucking do? Yeah. Yep. Then it's then you're just a human. Yeah. And a lot of times in those cases, something bad happens. So, like for instance, let's just say you did make that shot and something happened and mm -hmm. and it hurt her. It yeah. injured her or killed her or exactly. something. Exactly. Then, then everybody mm -hmm. coming down on you like this fucking idiot shot his fucking oh, cop. Absolutely. Like, blah, 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 blah. but what they don't—they're not taking into fact is that you literally went through all of your training <laughs> step by step by step. Mm -hmm. And what and and what are the odds of you having to to pull somebody out of a upside down car in floodwaters? Mm -hmm. How many times a year yeah. does it flood? Yeah. And then how many wrecks? Yeah. Like, so you're so the training can go right out the window, mm -hmm. and then it's just a human being trying to do what he can do. To exactly. fix the situation, exactly. But yeah, we're gonna come down on cops. We're gonna mm -hmm. money 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 quarterback these cops, but you know because a video these comes people, out, these people or, have no clue. Yeah, no clue. Mm -mm. And that's that's like anything. I mean, it's mm -hmm. anything that you train for. Like anything that that you, you know, if you train for something, you're you're trying to you're trying to condition your body and your muscle memory mm -hmm. and your mind exactly. to handle a possible situation. Exactly. But there's no way that every possible situation you, you could be trained on. You can't. And it, you know, running through all this, all the what ifs constantly, uh, it, you know, it weighs on you, you know, yeah. because you cannot. Yeah, I've had this conversation with many, many people. You, my mentality is prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Right. You know, Me so. Too. No matter what, we can always try to prepare and train for any situation. But like you said, there's always going to be that off the wall situation that's like, okay, we're 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 stumped. The training is not kicking in, yeah. you know, because I have honestly, I haven't even thought about this situation or how I would handle it because it's just it's a roll of the dice every day. You don't know what you're going to encounter. Yeah, um, especially out in the country. Oh yeah, for you know sure. I mean I know they have, the city has crazy its problems, but the down the country there, you don't. I mean it's just weird mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, you know just just crazy. Just recently, just the other day in Conroe, uh, just the other day in Conroe, this dude walked in to like the sheriff's office, I think, or something, and walked in there and said, "Hey, I killed my parents." Like, like what in the world? Yeah. <laughs> like seriously, and uh, and it turns out, yeah. Wow. You know. So, did you see the the shooting here at Lakewood Church? I did. That's a that's by somebody that lives out in Conroe. Yep, I saw that. It and uh, I haven't Sunday. really paid too much attention to it because I try. My girlfriend is a very very 
great person. <laughs> She's awesome. But she focuses on that shit when it happens. Like, immediately, she's just mm-hmm. reading the news, and she's reading the stories, and, and I'm yeah. the complete opposite. I give it a few days, let it breathe. Mm-hmm. Uh, an example of that, we were on the way back from Uvalde, or we were on the way back from um, Big Ben, when the, and we were going to go through Uvalde, and that's when that school shooting happened in Uvalde. Oh, wow. Remember that one? Yeah. And yeah. so she, the whole time we're driving, she's just on her phone, and she's updating me, updating me, updating me. And I'm like, the whole time I'm like, I, that sounds like horse shit. That doesn't yeah. sound right. Yeah. That's not like, and I'm just trying to tell her like, let it breathe, but she just can't, she's got to be in it. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. That's her thing. Like whatever. I'm not, I don't judge her for it. I just, I don't want it. I don't want it. Mm-hmm. Like even now she'll send me a text and be like, Hey, did you hear about that? So-and-so. And I'm just like, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want to know. Care. I don't care. I, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's, and it's not that I don't care. <clears throat> I obviously don't want innocent people dying and yeah. I don't want kids dying. Yeah. And I wish we could figure out a way to figure to fix all this shit. Exactly. But the problem is, is that it's the media's job is to get the the, the story out first, mm-hmm. and yeah. and they don't care how accurate it is accurate yeah. it is. They don't give nope. a shit if if they throw somebody on. Nope. There, there's no consequences if they put a, something that wasn't true mm-hmm. out. There's just no consequences about it. Mm-hmm. So it's so you got all this clickbait being introduced. Mm-hmm. You know, or you yep. got this 24 hour news station that has to just entertain people. That's their job. Yep. And yep. people love staring at car wrecks. You know, it's just part of the deal. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, it's just, it's nonstop. And so if you're worrying about that kind of shit all the time, you mm-hmm. can't focus on your own shit. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I don't have any, I don't have any bandwidth to worry about things that I can't control. Exactly. None. Exactly. Like zero. Mm-hmm. I don't want to know about none of it. I mean, unless it's somebody that I know personally, yeah. And that has happened. The Santa Fe, uh, the Santa Fe shooting, the Santa Fe school shooting here and down there near Galveston. Yeah, a friend of mine lost her mom in that shooting. Was a substitute teacher. Oh, she man. lost her in in that. And man, and that that's another thing that kind of crazy. Like the bigger I get, and the more people I know, the more I'm like connected to certain tragedies too, mm-hmm. which really yeah. sucks. Yeah. It yeah. sucks real bad because mm-hmm. that's sad whenever one of your friends is hurting because her mom got killed and yeah. she was a substitute teacher. She wasn't even a like the teacher. She's a substitute mm-hmm. and she got killed. It's crazy. Those, those that school stuff, man, is just I, that if I was a cop, that would end my career. I worry. I worry about my kid on the daily. Yeah. I don't really worry too much about my kid. I try not to do that because, again, it's just it's. You got to play the odds, man. Like, and the mm-hmm. odds are that's not going to happen. You know, the odds are somebody's not going to shoot up my kid's school. That's mm-hmm. the odds. Yeah. Yeah. But when it happens, it's tough, man. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's tough, tough, tough. And, and I, I just, I feel for parents, uh, I feel for, for teachers and, and cops and everybody who has to witness that stuff. I witnessed a, uh, when I was like, 19 or 20 maybe 18 i can't remember i was uh driving down the road and uh this back back in those days 59 didn't have overpasses mm-hmm. it was just a road and then you had to cross the freeway yeah and uh i was going to like near 242 and this 18 wheeler was crossing the freeway at night and this this car went under the trailer and it decapitated god and, dang yeah it, it killed like three people and mm. there was a baby in the car and i was the first one there I was first one on the scene. I saw the whole thing and it was just, and it, it fucked me up for a while. Yep. So I can't imagine if you're a cop and you're having to see that shit every day, yep. every day you or firefighter or EMT or any of those. Yeah. Guys. I mean, a single, a single police officer doesn't see that stuff every day at work, but right. it's still over, you know, I've had a, I've had a six year, I'm on my sixth year and, um, Actually, I'm on my seventh year, fi- fixing to hit seven. Um, it's an accumulation of events, yeah. you know, from day one up to now. Uh, all sorts of crazy stuff, man. I used to, I used to be a canine handler, you know, freaking finding bad guys and, you know, doing all kinds of crazy shit. Um, and then responding to that bad stuff, just it. Uh, all of those. No matter what you go through in life, when you go through those traumas, I mean, you 
those images are burned in your head until, you know, until the day that you die and probably afterwards. And that's, that's you know? what the average person doesn't mm-hmm. notice either. I mean, the average yeah. person doesn't see any, doesn't see anybody die a mm-hmm. violent death. Yeah. The average everyday person probably is never going to see anyone have a violent death. Mm-hmm. I mean, they may see a car accident. They may see, you know, their grandpa die or pass mm-hmm. away or that, you know, they may see that they may have an, but they're, but they're not going to see a violent death, a murder right. or a whatever. Right. And so I can't imagine a profession where you are going to see those things. Mm-hmm. And that's your job. Like yeah. Your job is to do that. And then, then you have to figure out a way to compartmentalize it. So that's, that's the one thing that I want everyone to realize that's not a cop or that has this negative view of police is put yourselves in their shoes for a minute, mm-hmm. you know, but I also think that things need to happen. Like, for example, I think that if you guys are on a shift, even if it's two hours in your shift and you see a deceased person, whether it's suicide or then you, that's it. You're off, you're off duty and you don't go back to work for a week or whatever it is. And you go, Mm -hmm. you need to go see somebody, you know, you need to go get your mind right before you're Mm -hmm. back out on the job because there have been a lot of instances where someone you know, witness something that was terrible and then they're right back on the job and mm-hmm. then they do something terrible. It, uh, kind of along the same lines of what you were saying, uh, after my shift partner died in that crash, um, I was off for, I was off for like a week or two. Oh, so she um, didn't make it? No, she, Oh, no, gotcha. She didn't. Um, I think, I think it was established later on that I guess maybe when she crashed, maybe her head hit the yeah hit the top of the i don't know but apparently it was like she didn't from what i heard apparently she didn't actually drown in the water she that was like that the, she the impact killed her some sort of impact killed her like right on the spot yeah um Damn, but that's tough um i was off for a couple of weeks after that um cuz traumatic experience you know yeah. And, uh, and it doesn't make I, you a pussy. That's mm-hmm. the thing, man. That you know, we got to get past this fucking machismo. Oh no, that doesn't bother me, shit. Yeah, dude, it yeah. bothers everybody, mm-hmm. man. I uh, it bothers I, some people dif- differently. Yeah, but I, I mean, I was who I wanted. I wanted to quit. I didn't want to. I, I was like, man, I don't. I don't know if I can keep doing this job. I really don't. And I mean, I would. It was a roller coaster. I, I mean, putting that, putting my, putting my gear on and my shirt and everything and going out there and, you know, still, still trying to keep my composure and dealing with people and responding to stuff and taking care of my business. I know I have to go out here. I have to take care of my business. I have to be strong. I can't let this affect me. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work. You yeah. can tell yourself that all you want, but it doesn't work. I mean, I've sat in my police car and cried many a times, you yeah. know, um, it just, it, the whole, the, like you said, the, the machismo or the, the tough exterior that we put on, you know, it's not, it's not always right. as it seems, you know, um, and, you know, but sometimes you just have to do that, you know, kind of let your emotions out behind the scenes and then strap up and go and go and do what you need to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, uh, life, life in general is not, is not easy, you know, especially when yeah. you're dealing with traumas like that. And, you know, I have, I have a very, a very close buddy of mine that, uh, saw somebody shoot, shoot himself in the head. Like he was like 18 or 19. And mm-hmm. like this dude just sat on the couch right there and just, and my and my buddy was in the apartment with him and just saw the whole thing, and it's like, dude, like you, oh man, having just all that crazy stuff burned in your mind, man, it just. But some people, what's weird is some people it weighs, human, on, it weighs on people. Yeah, I'm, even though they don't show weird. it, humans are fucking weird because some people, like my buddy uh, Scott Brown, Scooter Brown, that kid, man, or that guy, he's my age, but he's like, nah. I mean, he was a Marine and he's like, nah, I'll go right now. Like I, that shit didn't, I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and, yeah. and now that could be him being Mr. Tough guy, mm-hmm. but also, you know, my best friend in school, uh, we, we don't talk anymore really, but, uh, he was in, uh, E seven or E eight SF. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, he did many, 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 many 
stuff like a lot of things in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. And uh but he it never it never bothered him. Like it was like it's just a job, you mm-hmm. know? And so some people can do it and some people can't. But either way, you're just human. You're mm-hmm. you're a fucking human. Mm-hmm. And there's just I don't I don't see how I don't see how that stuff cannot affect you. Like it has to affect you mm-hmm. in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're a psycho. That's I mean, that's why, you know, and I think a lot of people have had this conversation. Um, but that's why most cops and dispatchers and paramedics and hell, doctors, emergency room nurses, they all they all uh they all turn to alcohol. Yeah. You know, because I mean, we're not going to do drugs. We're out here trying to fight dr- fight drugs. You know, which I think that's horse shit. I think you guys you know, should all be able to smoke weed, not on duty, <laughs> not on duty. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think, I think that one of the biggest problems with this country in general is the is the normal person not being able to use things like marijuana and mushrooms for. Uh, for for medicinal purposes you mm-hmm. know to 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 cope with shit yeah because yeah. like you said life is hard man mm-hmm. it's so difficult and if you know i'm i'm lucky enough where at night i get high every night before bed mm-hmm. i know you're a cop i don't give a fuck every <laughs> night before bed i get high and uh and i sleep like a fucking baby Mm-hmm. It resets me. I wake up. Now, I, I'm not a, a user during the day. Like, I'm not somebody that goes around smoking or eat. I eat yeah. it is what I do. Yeah. But, I, you know, I'm just not one of those guys. I don't do that shit because I like to be functional. Mm-hmm. And no matter yeah. what people say, if you're smoking weed, you're probably not the most functional you can be. Now, I do know yeah. some people that, like, my buddy Orion Burroughs, if he didn't have that, he would be useless. Mm-hmm. He has to do it all the time. Yeah. But uh, it's just crazy that that's something that is so helpful and I, and I know it's helpful. I'm off four different medication because I started doing this every day. Mm-hmm. And I'm all, and so I'll gladly take my risks with law enforcement getting that mm-hmm. uh, over over going back to those four med- those four medications that are that are made in, by man in some pharmacy. There's no yeah. telling what it's doing yeah. to you. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. What what are your um, what are your thoughts on the um, I try to have this conversation with anybody that's caught, but what are your thoughts on the, the way that current CBD slash THC and some of these head shops are legally being sold? Um, like what's your opinion? Not necessarily from a law perspective. I don't, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, behind the scenes, um, I understand that, um, uh, you know, these places can get, I guess, different licenses and things like that to, to sell the CBD or the hemp or, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> well, let me tell you something. I used to go to Colorado and get it, mm-hmm. right? Get it, bring it back, whatever, do the whole thing. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just admitting to felonies on this, on this <laughs> podcast. Uh, and then, but I, I never sold it. It was always like for personal consumption. Like yeah. I never, ever did I ever give anybody, like it was always just for me. Mm-hmm. And so, but now there's, you go to any CBD, any place, smoke shop, any place that sells pipes and all mm-hmm. that stuff, you can go in yeah. there and you can buy edibles that are made in Texas. Mm-hmm. And they say they're three, 3% THC, but I'm telling you, I go to the fucking moon every night on these fucking things. Yeah. Like I'm high as fuck. Like, yeah high as fuck (laughs) the same high that i am from the ship in colorado yeah so is it legal now is it not legal now is it is it blurry like kind of the poker thing there's a it marijuana is illegal right um but there's there's caveats when it comes to different variations and THC content is one of those variations. Um, you know, but how do you how do you fucking know now? That's my thing. You don't. It has to. It has to be tested. Right. It has to be tested. And so what? A, and so if you're a if you're a cop, right? Mm-hmm. Your main your main job is to protect and serve. That's mm-hmm. your job, right? That's the yeah. title. Yeah. Protect and serve. That is mm-hmm. your job. And you. 
and you pull somebody over and they 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 smell like weed, mm-hmm. all right? Okay, so that means now you got to pull them out of the car and you got to test them, see if they have a DUI, see if they're under the influence currently, mm-hmm. right? And I'm sure y'all got y'all's test to figure mm-hmm. out if they're high currently or not. Yeah, but but the weed part, the actual weed part, what they have on them, are y'all mm-hmm. is, are the departments actually going to spend the money to test that to see if it's weed? It can't be not a cheap, necessarily right, not unless it's like tons and tons of pounds yeah you know right uh, it's probably it's probably not gonna happen yeah so do y'all just let them go or uh it, it depends on it depends on the officer uh, yeah. to be honest um well fuck those guys some some guys them. some guys will some guys will arrest on it and some guys won't you know some um some cops will be the ones that you know hey like you know this is illegal you're not supposed to have it freaking throw it out on the side of the road and be on your way yeah you know um but you know larger when you're talking about larger amounts of marijuana um what a lot of people don't realize is um that even though it's marijuana and it's it it has its uses and and whatnot um but there's a lot of there's there's still gun violence and there's still violence that occurs because of marijuana. Oh, for They're sure. They're shooting. I mean, people. These guys are doing doing ripoffs of each other and you know killing each other over over marijuana. So but that's it, because it's still illegal. Yeah. If the shit was legal and yeah. regulated, like I mean, nobody's doing it over beer. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? That's true. So yeah. what are we fucking around with? Like, mm-hmm. why are we doing this? I mean, it's I. It's it's a much safer drug than alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know anybody that gets fucking high and then goes starts a bar fight. Like nobody. Yeah. I mean, when yeah. I get high, I don't do shit. When I get yeah. high, I want to sit here and watch Bob's Burgers <laughs> and fucking eat a whole box of oatmeal cream pies. You know, yeah. I'm not after yeah. anybody. I mean, the only time I'm gonna be violent if somebody tries to take my own my oatmeal cream pies away from me, <laughs> I'm gonna fuck them up. Yeah. You yeah. might get shot for that shit. Yeah. But like, <laughs> like I just I don't understand. Same thing with the mushrooms. I just mm. don't understand why these drugs are scheduled. Some of them are above worse drugs. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, it, it marijuana still a schedule one or schedule two drug? What is it? I'm not sure. I think it's schedule one. I have right? to look it up. I think it's above cocaine. Yeah, I think. I think I, that's a think. I could be full of shit, but well, well, cocaine's in a different. It's a uh, controlled substance rather than um, a plant. Well, I mean, it comes from a plant, but it is different, categorized differently. Yeah. Um, but you can but, still, but like, there's there's people starving. 25 30 year sentences for marijuana mm-hmm. yeah that's fucking crazy federally federally it's still the kid that raped the chick in harvard got like 12 months he raped a girl yeah he raped a girl and got mm-hmm. 12 months but yet, but yet you get pulled over and you got an ounce of weed on you and you get 30 years i mean it's not like that anymore yeah luckily but yeah golly man i just it's it's one of those things that i I think it needs to be legalized, but I think it needs to be super regulated mm-hmm. and I think it needs to be super hard to get your hands on. Yeah. And what we are right now, it's a, it's, mm-hmm. it's a molding of, it's very easy to get your hands on mm-hmm. and it's illegal. And it's like, to me, man, it's like, it's a, it's a total breakdown of the system mm-hmm. on that whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's controversial. And I think, I think that, uh, you know, I believe that it's still, it's still illegal, mainly because you have issues like, you know, I think that we can both agree, is it a good idea to drive when you're high? No. No. Um, and then, you know, the violence that's behind the scenes that occurs because of marijuana, um, you know. But again, it's because the, the way, law, not because yeah. of marijuana. But, right? you know. Do what? It but that but the violence behind marijuana is because the law, not because of marijuana. If if it's, it was legal, be- if it was legal, and it was regulated, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have that. That dude, that that's my whole problem with conservatives. Yeah, like really, it it fucking bothers me that they're all about border security mm-hmm. and they're all about uh personal 
freedoms and they're all about smaller government but yet they're super fucking hardcore on the war, war on drugs. Yeah. And what, what people don't realize is that war on drugs is what's giving the cartels the power. That's what's giving the board. That's it's, it's what's causing the border issue. Yeah. yeah. If, it, if we didn't have this war on drugs, we wouldn't be having this fucking border issue because Mexico wouldn't be all fucking corrupt because, mm-hmm. because of drug money. Exactly. Yeah. And so like yeah. your, so your thing that you're fighting for is what's causing the issue. That's your biggest issue right now, mm-hmm. but they don't want to, they, they don't want to see that. They mm-hmm. want to be like, no, no one can fucking do anything to alter their body. And we want to fix the border. Well, it's you pick, pick which one's more important. Cause right now, yeah. right now you're yeah. failing on both. You're failing mm-hmm. miserably on both mm-hmm. because dude, I'm telling you 85% of the people that I know smoke weed. Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah. not talking about just musicians. I'm talking about teachers. I'm talking about lawyers. I'm talking about doctors. I'm talking mm-hmm. about uh, cops. Yeah. I'm talking about you go down the fucking list. I know yeah. tons and tons and tons of people yep. that smoke weed. Yep. So you're not, you're not, mm-hmm. you're not doing your job. Mm-hmm. Now, if you pull over somebody and he's got six pounds of marijuana, then yeah, that dude needs probably needs to go to fucking prison because he's not selling mm-hmm. it through the proper channels. Yeah. He's, yeah. but anytime you make something illegal, what you do is you create a black market for that. Mm-hmm. And then that black market, yeah. that's where the violent comes in. Yep. Cause you're now you're propping up criminal activity. Yep. And when you prop up criminal activity, violence comes in. Mm-hmm. We saw it in prohibition. You know, yeah. we saw it, we see it with the war on drugs. Mm-hmm. You see it everywhere you go. And so we got to be a little bit more relaxed on what you let people get away with personally, mm-hmm. personally. Again, I'm not trying to say yeah. we should just open the floodgates. Mm-mm. You know, no, I think that, I think that if it, if it went through the proper channels and it was done correctly, I think, I think everything would be okay. Yeah. You know? Um, but you know, the flip side of that is, you know, a lot of us out here, you know, we, we, we sincerely believe that, you know, if, you know, if I, if I have a traffic stop or something and the dude has, um, has like a couple ounces of weed and has a gun. Okay. I sincerely believe that, you know, if I arrest that person that has drugs and a gun, because having a gun and drugs is All that's right, unlawful carry of a weapon. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, we could possibly be saving a life in doing that. And yeah. that's the way that we think. Uh, most I, and of us, I and I agree, you know, and that so, I agree. You can't, you can't, just, like I said, you yeah. can't just open it up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like there's a reason why you can't carry a firearm in a fifty-one percent alcohol venue, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. you don't want a bunch of fucking drunk people yeah. in there with a gun. <laughs> yep. like it's not that. Yeah. That's come on. That's common yeah. sense. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you're like to me, to me, if you're under the influence of a substance you should not be driving, whether mm-hmm. it's alcohol or prescription drugs yeah. or weed or exactly. anything, you exactly. should not be driving. You should not be impaired behind the wheel of a car yep. period. Mm-hmm. That should be the law, yep. but that's the law mm-hmm. that needs to be the law. Yeah. You don't have to have 14 other fucking laws to stack up to that. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, to me, stopping at a stop sign should be the law. You have to stop at a stop sign. Mm-hmm. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're two foot past the fucking white line. It doesn't matter if you came to a complete stop. Did you stop? Did you Mm -hmm. safely go through the intersection? Mm -hmm. That should be the law. The law should be you have to safely maneuver through an intersection. Yeah. Yeah. That should be the law. Yeah. Because whenever you start, you start writing tickets, you know, when you start making it, you start writing tickets for not stopping at the white line. Mm -hmm. Right. But no one's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you start making laws that it's no longer about people's safety. It's about, it's, you're trying to idiot proof the world and you can't idiot proof the world. And now you have all these fucking laws Mm -hmm. and you got cops that are having to pull people, you know, and, and I'm telling you right now, I say this, I've said this multiple times on the podcast. There are some laws that I don't give a fuck. Anybody says they were set up due to race. My big example in Texas is the front license plate Mm -hmm. that, that forever was a problem with the black community. They 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 would not put front license plates on their cars, mm-hmm. and and everybody knew that. And that law got that law got passed. Mm-hmm. There is no safety around that. There is nothing around that. I get it if you're a cop and you're in front of them and you want to run their license plate. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? Pull around. Go behind them. Like I, I don't have. That's bullshit. I, you know I, you can't tell me that somebody not having a front license plate is a is a danger to anybody else on the road. Is a danger to anybody else 
other than the fact that the cops can't identify them as easily as if they're on the back. But mm -hmm. if that's the case, then why do you not have a side license plate? Mm -hmm. Why is that not a law? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do away with the fucking law. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. and, you're, and, and then what that does is that causes you to pull somebody over for that. And then that can lead into a whole lot of other bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the story, uh, the story that I was taught uh, about the front license plate thing is that um, I guess somewhere, somewhere in history, I don't know when it was or where it was. <laughs> that seems like all of our laws. But um, the story I was taught in my training was that apparently there was there was an incident sometime where I guess a person had crashed a vehicle off like off of the road, like in some woods where it was like kind of hard to see or something like that. Um, and I guess the vehicle, like if this was the roadway, the vehicle was crashed, but it was back in like some bushes or some woods and the front of the vehicle was facing towards the roadway like this. Yeah. And, um, X amount of however long went months or years or whatever. And that car sat there for however long. Um, and, um, so once the car was finally discovered, um, I guess, like I said, this is what I was taught. I don't, uh, I guess they decided, oh, well, if that car had had a front license plate on it, the angle that it was sitting, then drivers would have discovered or that car would have been discovered sooner rather than later because the license plates reflective. So, um. I was taught that that's where the front license plate came from. Was that because, sounds like one of the most dumbest yeah. fucking reasons <laughs> to ever make a law in the history of yeah. ever. Mm -hmm. Like I, that to me, that's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. If you want to know what's wrong with America, dude, it's that shit. <laughs> like it's that shit. Like, yeah. like why, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's bullshit that you can, that we're the United States of America and you can literally go to jail in one state for something that you don't go to jail for in another state. Mm -hmm. it, if it's for jail time, it needs to be universal across the United States, period, end yeah. of fucking sentence. That's it. Yeah. You know, I just think it's horseshit. I think the fact that I can legally carry a fucking open firearm without a permit, without training, without anything in Texas, but yet I can't do that in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. I can be smoking a joint in on in Fremont Street in Vegas, mm -hmm. but if I do that in my front yard in Montgomery County, I'm gonna go to jail. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. To me, that's 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 my issue, and it's it's mm -hmm. like you're trying to you're trying to over legislate morality, and you're trying to you're you're over legislating because you're trying to give yourself a fucking job. Mm -hmm. And so now you have cops, that, and this is this is where this comes in, right? Okay, so you have the now you have cops that pulled somebody over for a front license plate and let's say that's it and you takes you 15 minutes to do a traffic stop i don't know what it really takes mm -hmm. average traffic stop what 15 minutes 20 minutes 10 to 15 Ten, okay so yeah. 15 minutes average traffic stop you got this cop for 15 minutes that's that's bogged down dealing with this fucking license plate issue and then you got a guy that's getting his house broke into and it's an eight minute response time mm -hmm. because it's how but it, you know it's okay for a cop to just be sitting on the side of the road just monitoring Mm -hmm. You don't have to have somebody pulled over all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But then whenever you turn police departments into pretty much profit centers for the county, which mm -hmm. is what they've done, uh, then you start making these laws that are, it's easier to write a ticket. You know, what's, what's going to make the county more than money? Is the county going to make more money off writing this ticket for somebody that's done for a license plate? Or are they going to mm -hmm. get more money off this, you know, arresting this homeless meth head that's on the side of the road? Yeah. They're not gonna make any money yeah. off that. It's mm -hmm. going to bog down. So then they start making these laws to, to, to make money for the county. Mm -hmm. You know, the DUI thing is, is, is one of the biggest scams in the history of America, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that you get pulled over driving for your first time and you're impaired, whatever that is, and it's going to be a minimum of 10 grand, like that's fucking insane. Mm -hmm. Now your second one should probably be 10 grand. Yeah. Your third one should probably be a felony like it is. Mm -hmm. And it should be more expensive, but your first one, come on, man. Your first yeah. one, you should get a little bit. Now, if you're blowing three times the legal limit, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But when I got my first one, my only one, I literally, I'm not even kidding, bro. I got, I blew a point zero eight one. Damn. Not even fucking kidding, dude. And I had to go to jail. I spent 18 hours in city Houston jail. 
Yeah. Almost had to spend the whole fucking weekend because it was like Good Friday or some shit like that. Mm. And they almost moved me over to county. And then I had to set the whole weekend. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a 250-pound dude that just blew a point two, uh, point zero eight one. How impaired am I? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All because I guess what I did, I rolled through a stop sign. And so I got pulled over. I was on a break of a show. Mm-hmm. Not not even kidding. So I couldn't even yeah. go back to play my show. I got arrested. Now, I was super cool with the cop. My breathalyzer results mysteriously never made it to prosecution. It all got dropped. You know, it didn't cost me a whole shit ton. Mm-hmm. But, you know, now I know people now they get their first DUI. And before they ever even before they before anything happens they have to have an interlock put in their car Mm -hmm. and all this stuff that they're doing for the county and and nothing's been proven you haven't even you haven't even fucking nothing's been proven yet yeah yeah and if nothing's been proven yet then why am i why are there already punishments Mm -hmm. shouldn't the punishment happen after you're convicted isn't that the way it should work i mean you would think so yeah so I just think it's horseshit. I think it's all horseshit. I think it's over making laws to make money for the county. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. And and that's bogging y'all down. It's bogging y'all down with horseshit. And the DUI is a different different thing because I know mm-hmm. that people die from that, and it's not even close to the same as a front license plate. Yeah. But man, you gotta. We gotta. Where are we at? What are we doing? Mm-hmm. What the fuck are we doing? Mm-hmm. Traffic. Uh, traffic violations are. Um, so every we have discretion about what we want to stop for um so you know everybody has their thing you know some guys some guys might have the front license plate thing that's something they like doing or or some guys like to do registration stuff or insurance stuff or speeding or or stop signs or intersections um and you know some of those guys you know, I've talked to them and they're like, they're like, hell yeah, I write citations for running a stop sign or a red light because two weeks ago I just worked a fatal at this freaking intersection. So yeah. yeah, you know, um, but we kind of get discretion about what we, what we have, what we stop on. Um, oh, so, I agree with running red lights. I mean, you're running red lights yeah. or stop signs. I was just talking about like the rolling through one. Like really, mm-hmm. if you're a cop and you witness me rolling through, through a stop sign and i mean you know you come to like california stop or whatever they call it you know you come through and then you go you look both ways there's no cars coming so you drive off like it's to me to me it's no harm no foul Mm -hmm. but you have to you have to make it a law but because you're trying to legislate idiocracy dude Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and so if you're running red lights or you're just blowing through stop signs without Mm -hmm without looking without to see, regard to without you was yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. then obviously you need to get yeah. pulled over and mm-hmm. something needs to happen you need to be taken off the fucking street yeah but if you if you know if you're out in the country and you roll up to a stop sign you don't come to a complete stop and you pull me over and you're a cop i'm gonna have a little bit of attitude with you about it mm-hmm. there's nobody out here yeah yeah you know but yet mm-hmm. i can i can play a gig in galveston and drive from galveston to here which is 45 the whole way mm-hmm. right and it could be one o'clock two o'clock in the morning and i'm literally getting passed by street racers i'm getting pretty much run over by folks yeah uh yeah. there's people all over the road drunk mm-hmm. and there's not a single fucking cop to be found mm-hmm. nowhere where are the yeah. cops we don't have enough of them well they're they're bogged down with some mm-hmm. bullshit fucking bullshit yeah. i told a story recently on here uh there was one time where i was living in houston and a buddy of mine his apartment I looked over and I see a dude kicking in his door. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so his brother lived next door. So I lived here, he lived here and then, then his brother or his brother lived here. Then he lived here. So I saw the dude kicking in the door and it was me and my, my girlfriend at the time. And I ran over and and knocked on his brother's door and me and his brother went and we just bum rushed the, cause we didn't know if Billy was there. Mm -hmm. We didn't know what the situation was. I didn't have a fire on me. So we just rushed it put the guy down, pinned him down and Mm -hmm. I put a chair over his neck and I sat there. Now, granted the guy was really so fucked up. He was just breaking. He, he thought it was his apartment. He was the building over. Okay. And so it wasn't really a violent, it wasn't no, there was no ill intent involved Mm -hmm. in it, but we still, I mean, we still fucked him up. Yeah. You didn't know that. Right. And we put him down and dude, it took, I'm not kidding, bro. It took the cops 45 minutes to get there. So if, what would what what would happen had that been a violent situation? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. 
had what it, what would if we were not able to get him as easily as we did mm-hmm. what what could have happened exactly but you're bogging these cops down on these bullshit laws and these bullshit things mm-hmm. whenever we need y'all out there fighting real crime mm-hmm. like real crime yeah you yeah. know if if somebody's driving 90 miles an hour in a 70 sure light them up you know like give them a ticket do whatever but if somebody's driving 75 or 80 in a 70 fucking mm-hmm. <laughs> chill out i have a i have a rule that i follow myself um and i don't write tickets to people for something that i would do right i think that's a good rule like, like i'll stop you like hey like you slow you down. know you're supposed to stop at the stop sign like man come on here's your warning right have a nice day yeah you know but i, I typically don't write tickets for something that i would do yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's a good I try, rule. i try not to I mean, I try not to be a hypocrite. I mean, I'm sure pe- everybody's a hypocrite at some point about something. Yeah. But. My, my uncle, he retired from HPD. And uh, he, we, I was hanging out with him the other day, and I was talking to him, and he said that his rule was if it was less than 15 miles over the speed limit, he wouldn't pull him over, unless it was a school zone. He mm-hmm. said a school zone, they could be one mile an hour, he's pulling him over no matter what. Yeah. But he said uh, if it's not a school zone, 15 miles, or he's not, he won't even turn on his lights. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, he's been retired for 10, 15 years. That might you know, that might change and maybe it should be 10 miles an hour or whatever. Yeah. But on the flip side, if that's the case, then why is the spin limit just not 10 miles an hour over what it is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like to me, why even have speed limits? Like, let's just watch the cars. And if they're driving recklessly, pull them over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, then, and then these, these places where like out in the country where you're going on a, a freeway and it's, 70 and then it drops down to 55 and then it drops down to 20 then it drops down to 30 dude you're on a fucking freeway bro if you're on a fucking freeway it come yeah. on do we got to drop down to 30 what is that yeah. for it's not for anybody's safety mm-hmm. it's for the county to make money yeah pulling these guys over and doing these speed traps and shit mm-hmm. so the i mean i guess the you see on the highways the the uh, speed limit drops when you're coming into a town, yeah, or something. Uh, which I get it. If the I town has red lights and that sort yeah, of stuff, but I mean, I definitely don't think it's reasonable to drive seventy miles an hour through you know Bob, right. Bob Smith, Texas, that has one red light. Yeah, you know, I think you know because you have pedestrians. But and, 50, 55. And yeah, <laughs> like why are you? Why am I yeah. drop, Why why are you having me slow down to thirty? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it. I just, mm-hmm. it's just shit like that. You know, and then you, I'm, I'm nitpicking really, to be honest with you. But it's, to me, it's just, we have too many laws and too many reasons for people to be pulled over. Too many reasons for just average, good hearted Americans get pulled over. Mm-hmm. You know, now, yeah. now if you're, you know, if you're profiling certain activity because you're looking for a specific something or, mm-hmm. you know, if you're having a big fentanyl problem at that moment, so you're mm-hmm. starting to, you know, we need to break down and stuff like that. But the yeah. problem is with this country is we overcorrect fucking everything. Mm-hmm. We overcorrect shit all the time. And so you'll have somebody spill coffee on their nuts and sue McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And then now, now you have, now it's a law that the fucking cups have to have hot coffee on the cups. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, mm-hmm. it's just overcorrecting shit. And it's the same thing with laws. So we create laws because one thing happened and then that law is a law from now on and it doesn't go away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. ugh, it's too much. It's too much. That's yeah. it. It's too much. But I, <laughs> but, but it's not the cop's fault. Mm-hmm. We got, no. come on, man. We got to support the police. Yeah. yeah. Listen, if you can't support police, mm-hmm. we have nothing in common. Mm-hmm. We are a nation of laws and those laws have to be enforced. Even if you think the law is fucking stupid, mm-hmm. it's got to be enforced. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so instead of going after the cops and and defunding the police and all this shit, what we need Mm -hmm. to do is we need to take a serious look at the laws, Mm -hmm. you know, and if you have a law that is disproportionately putting a certain race in jail, then we need to look at what that actually is. Mm -hmm. What's causing that? Why is this the case? Yeah. Right. Not just, oh, we're just going to keep sending them to jail because then then, then you're locking up generations of folks. Mm -hmm. Then you're creating fatherless homes all this shit because of something that may be bad, but may not be bad mm-hmm. like yeah. weed, mm-hmm. you know, yep. or gambling or poker or prostitution or go down the list of a million different things that people want to do with their own money and their own body. Yeah. Yep. You know, you mm-hmm. shouldn't have to go to, you shouldn't have to go spend 30 years in prison for heck. Cause you had some weed on you. Yeah. Or even yeah. a night in jail. It's stupid. 
Mm-hmm. My opinion. But yeah. you know more than I do when it comes to dipshits breaking the law. So I just I I love man, this shit, by the way. I like, know we're talking about it a lot. I just this is I'm very interested, so it's cool to have a cop I, on here. Uh, like when it comes to traffic stuff, like most of us if I'm on a traffic kick and I'm stopping cars or whatever, um, which is something I like I enjoy doing. Um, I'm stopping cars. I'm stopping cars because I'm looking for a bad guy. Right. I'm not, I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for Jeff Canada. I'm looking for a bad guy. I'm looking for a bad motherfucker that, you know, needs to go behind bars that has drugs, has money, has guns that, you know, doesn't need to be out in the public and is a danger. That's the person that I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm very much the type that like, Hey, you're Joe Schmo's soccer mom. Like, hey, slow down. You're going 85 and a 75. See you later. You know, on to the next car because, you know, we're picking violations. I'm picking violations out because, because every stop that I make is a roll of the dice. Yeah. It's a roll of the dice. Who's driving this car? What's going to be in this car? You know, um, but that's so, not y'all's only job, you know, though, and that's what mm-hmm, sucks. Yeah, your job, your your job is not only enforcing these crazy laws, like like the real laws that are mm-hmm. designed to get people off the streets, but also the dumb fucking laws. But you also you have to be a social service worker. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to show up to domestic violence calls that you know yeah. there's not going to be any fucking. You you know you probably been you've been at this house nine times. Yep. You know that she's not yep. going to press any fucking charges, but yet you it's still got to go out there. It's a never ending circle. So you have that, and then you know it's just, and then you have to be traffic guys whenever there's a wreck. I mean, you to me there's just so, so many, many different. Hat, right. We have to wear so many hats. Yeah. So many hats in society. You know, the general population in the world doesn't understand that. And y'all pretty much got to be lawyers. Like you got to know the law and you got to mm-hmm. know what, yeah. what you can and can't get away yeah. with. And you got to yeah. just so much, man. Mm-hmm. I, I do not envy any cop out there at all. <laughs> uh, it's a very, yeah. to, to me, to me, to fix it is we need to go through and we need to do a very, very intricate detailed look at laws, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the communities. Then after that, I think it needs to be a hundred thousand dollar entry level job. Oh yeah. Where after sure. five years on the for job, sure. you're at two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars. That what that would do is that would have more cops join, mm-hmm. okay. And then what you do is those cops are on the street half the time, and they're in training the other half the mm-hmm. time. And yeah. you have enough cops now because you're paying them what they're what they're yep. worth. Yep. Then you have trained cops on the street. Yep. And you can make that money, and it's too expensive. Well, how much money is your department paying out on settlements? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like I hear the LAPD's millions of dollars every year in settlements. Probably. So it's like if you you could eliminate that by having better cops and better trained police, mm-hmm. then you're not paying these yeah. fucking settlements. Yep. And then you can raise the praise the price. Now, does a does a cop out in Splendor, Texas, need to be making the same amount that a cop in HPD makes? Maybe not. I don't know because I don't know really mm-hmm. what the, the that whole power structure is, you yeah, know. Yeah. But it needs to be. They need to be higher paid. It needs mm-hmm. to be a higher paid job. Yeah, it does. You know, I, I, why would anybody want to go go through all of that shit whenever they could go to four years of college, never have a gun pointed at them, and be an engineer and mm-hmm. make two hundred thousand dollars a year? Why would I be a cop? Same thing with teachers. Why would I be a teacher? I'm going to go for four years of college so I can go teach your little fucking asshole how to not listen. Yep. You know, so it's cops and teachers, man, they need, it need, it needs more money. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, we definitely don't do it for the money. No, I know. That's for damn sure. I know. Um, you and know, that, you and- have, you have guys out here that are, you know, you have guys out here that are, you know, let's say they're divorced. They had bunch of kids with their ex-wife, they're divorced, you know, and now, you know, homeboy is a police officer at, you know, John Smith city or whatever. And he's working, he's working a 12 hour shift and then going and having to go and work at a a side job for another 12 hours because he has to pay child support for those kids. And, you know, next thing you know, you know, the burnout is just, it, it, it catches up to well, you. Well, not only that, you know? imagine this. Imagine you're a cop, and you can probably imagine this. You're a cop. 
you know, you're, you, you just had to pick, you, you know, you just had a medical bill come up and you're trying to figure figure out if you're going to pay that or you're going to pay your mortgage or what you're going to let slip for the mm-hmm. month. Cause you're only making forty five fifty thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. trying to raise a yeah. family on that. And then you, you, you pull over a, a kid, 16, 17 year old kid, and he's got an ounce of weed on him and some cash. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, well, some of that cash just ends up in your pocket because Mm -hmm. I don't make enough fucking money to do this job. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, corruption starts breeding and then you have bad cops that are out there fucking taking money off people and drugs and selling drugs. I know it happens. It happens everywhere. Dude, I know a friend of mine that was a cop. He's no longer a cop that was, and he'll flat out, well, I probably shouldn't say that, but yeah, he had his extracurricular activities to, to be able to pay for Mm-hmm. for shit i mean he'd pull people over and do all kinds of crazy shit mm-hmm. i mean nothing ever a danger to anyone else but mm-hmm. definitely scamming the system yeah yeah there's that one cop was it a uh, cocaine cowboys or something up in new york the, the that whole division up in new york that was just corrupt and the cops were making like a million dollars a year and shit i don't doubt it it's all it was back in like the 80s yeah it's it i just think it breeds corruption whenever you, you're not when you're not paid enough to do mm-hmm. such a such a difficult job yeah you know it does it does no um but i can talk about this shit all day we've almost been going two hours she's pregnant i can see she's over there like i gotta get all, <laughs> i gotta move i gotta do something else <laughs> huh oh you can go go ahead and go it's fine i'll i'll I, it, that won't even be on when i'm talking so if i'm talking that thing it'll be off uh so let's get back to music just for a minute um do you have other songs you're gonna record are you already i do you already yeah, have a studio planned out. You're going to go to Stormy. Is that what you mm-hmm. said? Yep. Yeah. I think that's a good choice, yeah. man. Stormy does great work. Uh, I, I had some friends that were working over there. I don't know if they still are or not, but, but Rosewood does great work. Stormy does great work. Um, you know, just only thing on my advice I can give you is, is have a plan. Mm-hmm. All right. Just have a plan with, with what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Cause if you don't have a plan, then, then shit, that's when shit you start getting taken advantage of because, like have a plan and work that plan. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to do a six yeah. song EP and you're going to release that at one time, what's your follow up? Mm-hmm. Do you have another song? So what I would do if it was me, right? Mm-hmm. I would do a four song EP. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do all six songs. I and then I would so. schedule the next one six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks after that EP drops, I'm dropping a single. Mm-hmm. And then six weeks later, 12 weeks yeah. later, I'm dropping another single. Yeah. That yeah. way, it's going to keep more eyes because what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen. You're going to drop the sixth EP, right? That's mm-hmm. going, to, and you're going to then that thing's going to be out there for four or five months, and all the work you did to get people to pay attention to your music is going to go right out of the window. Mm-hmm. You got to keep hitting people with stuff. Like yeah. what we're doing this week, this year, we're releasing a new song every twelve weeks for the whole year. We're not mm-hmm. doing a record, uh, and that's I think that's pretty much what I did last year. Was every twelve weeks I released a new song, and if you do that. It just keeps your, it keeps people's eyeballs on you. And the reason I picked 12 weeks is because I have six weeks that I promote the song coming up Mm -hmm. and then the song hits. And then for six weeks, I promote the song that it's out. Mm -hmm. And then in that sixth week, I switch gears and I start promoting the next song. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I do it. And it gives you a little more flexibility and freedom to, to not have to complete that song until you have to complete the song yeah so what i would do if 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 i was giving my advice to any artist out there that that's going to put out their first music because you're going to try to get that other one taken down Mm -hmm. it's gonna be your first music out there have a plan work Mm -hmm. the plan but to me to just have your plan is just one release and that's it Mm -hmm. it's just in this day and age you're you're waste you're just wasting your money dude you're Mm -hmm. wasting your money you're wasting your time you're better off just doing it in front of a camera and putting it on youtube or yeah or tiktok or whatever any of that shit yeah uh but if you're going to be releasing music to spotify apple music all that stuff you got to have a plan man mm-hmm. you got to have a plan uh and then you need to have enough connections really where you need to you need to get a thousand spins if you're not getting a thousand spins within your first week that you release a song then mm-hmm. you're not doing something right okay and most songs don't reach thousand spins, which I don't understand. I mean, I can literally put a song out and be at a thousand spins in twenty four hours, and it's not because I have a shit ton of fans; it's just because I have certain fans that just put that shit on repeat for a week. Yeah, yeah, you know, and just get that number up over that thousand mark. Because if it's below that thousand, and somebody goes to you and sees you booking, it's like what? 
mm-hmm. you know yeah so really like just 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 make a plan work the plan stick with the plan you know change change if you have to for various reasons yeah but uh i definitely wouldn't just release one collection of songs and then and then be done and then well not even be done like you have plans to do something later but yeah. what are what is it yeah i have a like those those six are just kind of my my original six that i've been working on and then i have obviously i have other ideas that i'm working on that need to be you know kind of polished yeah um and so i'll follow up with those um and then my hope is to you know instead of doing an ep actually release an album that has like maybe 12 songs on it or something yeah Uh, i don't know if that'll be this year but i mean who knows it might yeah i want to do an album really bad i have plenty of fucking songs for it i really want to do an album and i want to release another album the problem for me is just funding and money Mm -hmm. you know it's very hard for me to go drop 20k on a record uh it's very it's way more easy for me to drop 2000 on a song yeah do the song put it out and you know Mm -hmm. Then drop another two thousand, put it out. Another two thousand, put it out. Then it is yeah. to just put out one clip. Now, if I had unlimited money, dude, I'm telling you right now, if I had unlimited money, I could release a record every every six months. Mm-hmm. I could release a ten song, twelve song record every six months. It's, I I just write that much music. Yeah, yeah. No, and I and I would write more. Like I have to. What's bad is I taper my writing now, and that sucks. It's really bothering me. Like I actually don't write as much as I used to because I have so many fucking songs that I need to get rid that get recorded. Mm-hmm. And I don't record every song. That's just the ones that I think are are good enough to be recorded and be released. Yeah. So it's tough, man. Yeah, it's tough. I uh, I love I love being in I love being the police. I really do, and it was a dream of mine. Um, but. Um, music, music's where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to, uh, I eventually want to get to that point where yeah. I get to that fork in the road to yeah. where I get to, all right, and put up or shut up. How you old are know, you? 33. 33. Mm-hmm. You're like the third person I've had in is 33. Yeah. Maybe the fourth. <laughs> I'm old as fuck. I'm 45. Um, yeah. Because although although I get joy and satisfaction from from doing the job, um I recently found out that I think I get more whenever I'm playing. Listen, dude, you know? there is nothing better than being on stage for me. Mm-hmm. Like that is my happy place. Mm-hmm. Being in front of a crowd, making them laugh, making them enjoy the time, whatever, making them feel shit. That is my number one thing I love more than anything on this planet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just it's another it's another way of service for me. Yeah, you know I'm a, I already kind of, you know, live a life of service if you want to call it. Um, it's another way that you know, you know, people can connect with our songs and you know they feel something, they shed a tear, they it reminds them of such and such experience they had or reminds them of somebody they lost or something they went through or, you know, and, you know, that's what's me. That's what music has done for me. And so I was like, you know, I want to do that for other people. Yeah. Or even Um, more important that it can make them forget about some of those things for a few minutes. mm -hmm. If you're going through a bad divorce or you haven't seen your kid in a while or whatever, and they come out and see you Mm -hmm. play and for three minutes of a song or or half an hour Mm -hmm. set or an hour of a set, make them completely forget about all Mm -hmm. the bullshit that's going on in their life. We, Mm -hmm. we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm where you and I are exactly in tune on that one, man, because you know, I tell people all the time, man, we have, as as entertainers we have a responsibility to to put on a show for p- folks that are coming out to see us mm-hmm. play. Yep. It's our it's our job, it's our responsibility and we need to and we need to take that seriously. Mm-hmm. Don't take it for granted because yeah. uh I I know what music has done for me and it's mm-hmm. it literally say I I would not be sitting here right now if it wasn't for the power of music. I can mm-hmm. guarantee you that. Oh yeah. Guarantee you. I would have I been I say the same thing. Yeah, I would have been in way more trouble when I was a kid. I would have you know, way more trouble now. Like, I mean, the whole reason I got my life together is because of music. So it's like, yeah, 
it's it's a uh, it's it's one of the most beautiful things I think that can happen. I think it's really good for kids. I think kids. I don't know what the 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 facts are, but I'm pretty sure there's been studies done. I don't know, but kids that are involved in music at a young age are better at, you know, they're just better at everything. Really. Mm -hmm. They're better at, at, uh, at physical stuff. They're better at mental stuff. They're better at coping with shit. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's just so, it's just such a powerful, powerful tool and a powerful thing. Oh yeah. And so if you can, and that's just playing it Mm -hmm. when you get to the part where you start creating it and you're Mm -hmm. creating art, now you're taking something out of thin air and turn it into something mm-hmm. tangible. Yep. Yep. It's beautiful. I think that, uh, I think jelly roll hit it on the head. Um, we went and saw him last year, October or the year before. I don't, he, it was when he was touring with a uh, shine down, mm. which that was in, in, that's where she got that shirt. Um, but he hit the nail on the head. He, he always says music is therapeutic. Yeah. And it's like, he said that, and I was like, man, that's just, that's such a vast statement. That's just, that's powerful, Yeah, you know, because it just, it's amazing. It really is. Yeah, music, there, I'm just telling you, amazing. there's no way I'd be here. Mm-hmm. I would have killed myself a long time ago if it was not for the power of music. Mm-hmm. And so... I, it's, it's what I love. I promote it as much as possible. You know, it's part of the reasons why I promote so many other artists. I mean, I, dude, I'm always trying to shed a light on other artists Mm -hmm. because it's just, you know, when somebody puts out a good song, it needs to be, it needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. And that's what pisses me off about this fucking industry is that you got somebody who put out this beautiful piece of art that needs to be heard but you got all these people stomping it down. You got all these people that saying, mm-hmm. nope, we're not that we're not gonna allow that shit to get out. Yeah. You have all these gatekeepers. Nope, we're not gonna allow that unless you do this, unless you pay this, unless you have this. Man, fuck that, dude. Let's just get our music out. Mm-hmm. Let's get it out in the world. I don't even mm-hmm. care if I make any money off my actual song. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'll make my money off merch. I'll make money off playing live shows. I just want people to hear my music. And I want people to hear good songs. I want to hear people hear mm-hmm. other people's music. Yeah. And we need less gatekeepers keeping the good music out. I mean, because right now it's like a song may be good or it may not be good because it's all about the money. It's not about the actual art. It's not about the actual song. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, Morgan Wallen didn't blow up because of an actual song. He blew up because of his because of everything else that involves it. I mean, then it's like me now. I mean, my I don't even consider myself a freaking musician anymore. I consider myself a fucking brand who happens to play music because i have to do so many things all day long that have nothing to do with playing a song yeah i have to do that to be relevant Mm -hmm. and it's just crazy it's crazy Mm -hmm. i mean i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying this podcast i'm enjoying doing all the reels i'm enjoying taking the shitter pics on thursdays and doing my throne thoughts i enjoy doing all that shit yeah it's fun but it's kind of ludicrous man because i'm Mm -hmm. i'm spending i guarantee us i work 80 85 hours a week Mm-hmm. guarantee and that's not even counting on stage oh, yeah. i yeah. bet you mm-hmm. so yeah. all right brother well hey man just keep doing what you're doing come up with a plan release some songs oh, get yeah, that other sure. song off the off the off of a spotify or whatever yeah, it is i need to work on that yeah and also you need to like take whenever you get ready to put your new music out get with me I'll help you out on how to distribute it where you have all the power mm-hmm. where you can, you have everything. Cause you yeah, need, I need there, to, I need to navigate that. Yeah. Cause there's analytical tools that you can get that you can't get. If somebody else does that, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. And so yeah. you should be able to see who's listening to your song, what cities are listening to your song. You can listen to all that stuff and then mm-hmm. you can start putting your, putting your attention in those cities. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm working on right now is trying to get all the analytics together and be like, okay, what, I already got this market sewed up. What's my next market? Mm-hmm. And then start hitting those markets. Heavier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't do that if somebody else has control of, of what, of that shit. Mm-hmm. You're not, listen, you're mm-hmm. like the probably 10th or 15th person that I've had this conversation with about somebody else doing everything for you. And then you not knowing anything what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. It happens all the time. And matter of it's fact, so- that's what they, that's what they bank on. You know, they bank on that mm-hmm. shit. They bank on you not knowing what you're doing so they can take advantage of you. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm yeah. trying to battle that. I'm trying to battle musicians being taken advantage of. I've kind of taken that up to be my 
cause, mm -hmm. if you yeah. will. And that's and that's what I'm gonna do. That's a good thing. I'm gonna do. It's a good it. thing. Yeah. So that the I know some the people, little men don't get freaking taken advantage of anymore. Yeah. And I know some people think it's me just bitching or me being negative. I just I, I just don't want people to run into the same problems that I run into. And if we can, mm -hmm. and if we can eliminate that, then cool. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not trying to knock anybody off whatever they're doing. I'm not trying to knock anybody's you you do whatever you want to do. But musicians need as many tools as they can in their belt just mm -hmm. like a cop does. Yeah. Has to, needs yeah. as many tools in their belt to do their job and if and if you're keeping tools out of their belt, now you're a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And we need less gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. Cuz we don't need them. You don't need them. You yeah. don't need a label. You don't yeah. need any of that shit. You need a cell phone. You need a guitar, you need a vocal, you need a camera, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. Yep. You don't even have to put overproduced shit on Spotify anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people are doing freaking phone Social recordings media. and putting it on and putting it on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Just a, of a phone recording. Oh, wow. Yeah. Happens all the time. I haven't seen that. Miranda Lambert and 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 Jack Ingram did it last year, 2 years ago. Oh, okay. Just a whole thing like Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't That's need a, that shit. It's a whole new world now. Yeah. You don't yeah. need everything else. You don't need all, like they had they're they're the reason they're the reason it's getting so divisive right now and, and about that is because the the people that have been making the money for years and years and years and years and years are are fighting to keep that money. Mm -hmm. And everything is a limit. You know, it's it's everything. I mean, for years and years and years, photographers' prices have been through the roof on things. Well, now they've had to drop their prices because now there's tools we can do it on our own. Yeah. Same thing with recording studios. You know, in Nashville, it's coming way down to record because anybody can go buy a laptop and record in their house now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they have to they have to to figure out how to add value, a perceived value to the artist. Yeah. And what I wanted the artist to know is you don't need any of them. You don't need mm -hmm. a booking agent. You don't need, I mean, it's nice to have one. You don't need a radio promoter. You don't yeah. need any of this shit. You can do it all yourself. Mm -hmm. All. I don't have anybody, bro. Yeah. I don't have a booking agent. I don't have a nothing. I just do it. Yeah. You know? Now, granted, it's a full-time job. Oh, yeah. For damn sure. You know? It's a full-time fucking job. People ask me all the time, how do you how do you have the output you have? And it's because this is my hobby. Like, this is my love. This is, like... I don't have any other hobbies. I have mm -hmm. hanging out with my girl and I've hanging out with my kids and I have work. That's it. I don't, I've, I don't play poker anymore. I don't play PlayStation anymore. I don't, I mean, I gave him PlayStation, to my kid, he brought it over cause he's staying the week with me, but like I cut out all of those distractions. Mm -hmm. All I do is my brand. I eat, sleep and breathe my brand. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, then I don't see how anybody can, can make it. Yeah. You gotta. Yeah. So mm -hmm. whatever, dude, I think you're cool. I think you're a cool dude. Don't don't shoot anybody. <laughs> like don't shoot an unarmed. I don't plan on it. Kid, make you know if you point something at you, make sure it's not starburst or something. Make sure it's a real gun, <laughs> and uh, don't don't kill anybody, man. <laughs> Unless they're a thief. If they're a thief, just shoot them on sight. Like don't even, because they're like they're. I, that's the one person. Like other than like child rapists or men that hit women, a thief is like the scum of the earth to me. Yeah. Yeah. Our next door neighbor here, another reason why we're moving, our next door neighbor here just got busted. Um, he was breaking into home. He's a, he's a real estate agent and he was breaking into homes, uh, in Bender's landing and everywhere else. He, he's stolen some stuff out of here. We just didn't know it was him. And they just, they busted him and he had a bunch of devices that were open that could open garage doors and, and cars and all kinds of shit. And then, then they raided his house and had the, the cop was guessing over $30,000 of stolen goods. They took out, they had like a hundred bicycles, golf clubs. God dang. Crazy shit. Brad, his name was Brad something. And the uh, dude was drafted major league baseball, real estate agent, had wife and kids. And then over the last couple of years, his, his, uh, old lady left him and it's a sad, sad deal. I think, I think it's definitely drugs. Yeah. But, I cannot stand a fucking thief, dude. Mm -hmm. I work way too hard for everything I have for somebody just to take it. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, so, absolutely. I can tell you this: if I ever walk up on somebody breaking into my trailer or something, there's gonna be somebody dead. There's no doubt in my mind about it. I just can't. 
I just, I, this just one thing I'm not going to deal with. There was a, just this last Sunday night, there was some, some kids trying to steal cars where I work and we were chasing them all over the city. <laughs> yeah. And it just, um, it takes a low, low, low person to do shit like that. And it's, it's only going to get worse. Like I said, mm-hmm. with the economy and everything and people are getting more and more desperate and, you know, used to, they only had to steal one car a month. Now they're having to steal three cars a month or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. And especially in places where you have very few cops. Yeah. Oh dude, they're, they're getting away with it left and right. I mean, you have unsolved cases of, yeah. of thefts and stuff because like we don't have, we don't have enough freaking cops to have a presence and to catch these motherfuckers, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it sucks. Yeah. It sucks so bad. Yeah, I agree 100%. But I also think that I think that if if I have an air tag on my car and it gets stolen, that whole process, I know there's there some hang-ups about the cops being able to use that to go get the people. Same thing with like a Jeep, like find my phone if my phone gets stolen or whatever. I know mm-hmm. there's some issues where cops can do certain things. I think that's horseshit. Mm-hmm. If somebody fucking violates my rights to take my shit, then fuck their rights. They have no rights. Fuck all of their rights. Go get my shit, whatever you got to do. Because what's going to happen is we're going to start doing it ourselves armed. And that's really what's going on now is you got people just going to get it themselves. Yeah. I've done it. I went to some, somebody stole my phone one night from a bar. I went to, I, found it went to their house knocked on the door said somebody stole my phone luckily it was their daughter or kid or something that had taken it and their dad like given like gave the phone back to me and there wasn't an issue yeah but what happens yeah. if there was mm-hmm. you know yeah so all right buddy i'm gonna let you get out of here man thanks for coming and hanging out with me oh yeah i need to come Appreciate out and see a show it. for sure get get out and see you play are you booking any are you playing any more at the lakeside place um i've been in contact with them trying to get out there um my next one is friday in magnolia then where you at magnolia at the there's a barbecue place off of 1774 called the meeting place oh cool uh, i'll be there this friday then i'm in magnolia this friday too oh we're at moonshine deck oh, okay but this won't come out for i don't know i think this is episode 21 and i think i just i just released episode 15 so I they're you. about and I'm only trying to do one a week, so it's probably six weeks or so before it gets released. Gotcha. But I don't know. I have a couple that already edited. I might just start doing two a week because I'm starting to get – What? but the thing is I'm moving here in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm moving studios, and so I'm trying to get enough locked in so if that if there's something happens and I can't get anything done, that yeah. I have those in the can. Yeah. But if I get moved and I don't ever take any time off, then I'm probably going to start releasing two a week Yeah. because I'm recording two a week right now. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, two to three. Some weeks I'm doing three. Yeah, so yeah. I'm talking for three hours a day on this thing, then going and playing a three hour show, and then talking yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, man. I'll let y'all get out of here. Good luck on the baby. When's the baby coming? May. May. Mm-hmm. So May. not you'll get you'll get it out of there before the real tough part of summer. Yeah. Yeah. You excited? <laughs> um. <laughs> I already have I already have a thirteen year old, so I'm, I wasn't excited about starting over, but it it happened for a reason. So yeah. it's all good. We'll we'll get it. And you have a boy or a girl already? A boy. And what's this one gonna be? Boy. Another boy. Yeah. 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 But the good news is you can change your mind if you want to. These days, you know, you mm-hmm. just you want to be a girl, just. <laughs> no, we ain't, no. Just just mm. tell her that she <laughs> tell her she looks like a girl. And, you know who knows. Yeah, That's we fun. wanted a girl. We wanted a girl, but no, it's a boy. It's very much a boy. Yeah, I have two boys, and uh, and then Candace has a daughter. And I will tell you what, man, I never thought that I w- I never thought that any female would have me wrapped around their finger like that little girl does, dude. Golly, she does. Yeah, she's she is uh she's a doll, man. Uh, sometimes sometimes you just want to wring her neck, but but she's a uh, and she knows she knows she's got me wrapped around her finger. She knows, yeah, big time. I'll do anything for that girl. <laughs> All right, man. I'll let you get out of here, dude. We'll see you next time. Y'all be safe. Don't be a butthole. <laughs>